And Father, I pray if this is all you do tonight, we are more than grateful for giving us an experience that shifts us to realms unimagined. This is what separates us from noisemakers. This is the factor of the spirit. Evermore, spirit of the living God, this remains your place. Evermore, evermore. Replace any man as you will and as you wish. Shift us to whatever direction we are that malleable. We pray that as men look at men, they will not see men, but they will see Jesus in the midst of the lampstands, in the midst of the candle stands. We are giving ourselves wholly to this because we know that our profiting will appear unto all. We are tapping, O oh God, into the ancient mysteries that you taught our fathers. You taught they that went ahead of us that when men stay in your presence, they can renew their strength like the eagle. They can mount up with wings. They can run and not be tired. They can walk and not be weary. We exchange our weaknesses tonight with your strength. We exchange our frustrations. We exchange our limitations. We exchange our pain. We exchange our fears. We exchange our doubts. We exchange our confusion. Because worship is a place of exchange. More than a place of reception. Let everything that is not you in us, leave us. Let everything that is not you in us, be exited out of our lives. Let everything that is not you in us, leave. And let that space be filled experientially with more of you. More of your light more of your power more of your wisdom a deeper hunger for fellowship more than ministry more than preaching more than leadership more than prosperity more than fame more than money may we desire you remain the object of our pursuit remain the object of our passion remain the jurisdiction of our pursuit Merci, Merci. thank you father we bless you we honor you and we worship you forever be glorified this is koinonia you have called it by its name you have engraced it by understanding let this place remain a tabernacle of your presence you can do without us but please carry us along there are infinite replacements but we pray by the mercies of the God of heaven. Let this place remain a center where your eyes continue to behold. Let this place remain a place of mysteries. Let this place remain a place of encounters. Let this place remain a place of miracles, signs, wonders. Let this place remain a place of bread, Bethel understanding the richness the abundance of your supplies let this be the wealthy place the place where you exchange our limitations for the supplies of heaven 
let this place remain the place where men meet with God we vow that forever you will be glorified we vow that forever we will only lift up the anthem of your name we hide behind the cross we hide our flesh we hide every personal agenda and we pray that Jesus and him alone will be seen experienced and known thank you father thank you for your atmosphere in the name of Jesus Christ amen please sit quietly if you can God bless you whoa Just help those under the anointing. Very powerful time. Very, very powerful time. Every once in a while, God will show up in these dimensions. Those under the anointing, just help them. Just keep them somewhere quiet. Hallelujah. A few minutes with us tonight and then we will pray I want to encourage everyone to continue to press towards the things of God um, it's very easy to be distracted in this kingdom it's very easy to lose focus to major on the minors let's settle down please those inside outside and minor on the majors but God brings us here to help us even by his spirit I want to share with you something very briefly that I believe is very powerful and very instructive and then we'll have the opportunity to pray if you're with me please say amen, amen. it's a revelation that God put in my heart is for koinonia but then it's for the body of Christ and I believe that the Lord will help us tonight. Why prophecies fail? Please write. And let's discuss within a few minutes a very powerful understanding that God gave me. Why prophecies fail? First Timothy chapter 1, please and verse 18 believers continue to struggle with the tragedy of unfulfilled please listen please listen unfulfilled prophecies praise the lord The Lord is speaking to someone in overflow one. It will not happen as you have seen. I don't know what I'm saying, but the Lord is just asking me to speak it just like that. It will not happen as you have seen. I believe that tonight's um, message may be why the anointing is moving in this dimension. It will not happen as you have seen. It will not happen as you have seen. It will not happen as you have seen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So many believers continue to battle with unfulfilled prophecies. Here and there, men and women of God all over the world continue to speak the counsel of God, the word of God to individuals. But then we notice that people receive these prophecies and most now, let me tell you sincerely, most of the prophecies we receive never come to pass. And tonight is an attempt to very quickly show us what may be wrong. And then also to reveal to us the place of the prophetic. Listen very carefully. And the place of the word of God. Because there are people... 
for instance, who have seen things in visions, in dreams, or have received prophetic words from anointed people, genuine people filled with the Holy Spirit. And these prophecies may not have been consistent with the dealings of God. Some of them may have been negative prophecies. And they have remained helpless, believing that just because a man anointed by God, accredited by God, made a pronouncement and utterance to them, it meant that nothing could be done about it. And then they sit down and allow those prophecies happen. So we're dealing with the prophetic today. And I pray that God will grant us understanding. So let's go very quickly. Our time is gone. Read with me verse 18. Everyone want to read. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. Uh -huh. According to the prophecies which went before on thee. That thou war a good warfare stop there paul is speaking to his son in the gospel timothy and he's saying that some prophecies were released to go ahead of you now understand what he's saying he's encouraging him he's saying mr man be assured of this that we have released prophetic words to go ahead of you but he tells him that by them, those prophecies that have gone ahead of you, you will war a good warfare. Hallelujah. So it is possible that prophetic words can be sent ahead of a person. Please listen very carefully. Whether in ministry, in family life, business, career, whatever it is, that the prophetic is real. Now let me balance this up front even before we continue our discussion. There are people here and there who probably because of their religious affiliations, their denominations, or the kind and the structure of mentorship they may have received, may have been trained by well-meaning, sincere men and women of God to ignore or despise the prophetic, to despise prophecy. We find people, some persons have been very vocal about the fact that the prophetic is not useful in today's church and all versions of sarcasm has been communicated as regards the prophetic the bible says very clearly and i think that i will just um solve that once and for all in first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20 let the word of god speak once and for all first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20 if you're a christian please read with me one to read despise not prophesyings one more time this is a warning do not despise prophesying do not despise the place of the prophetic in your journey to knowing god and living a meaningful life that means that the bible recognizes that there is a place for the prophetic Okay, so we establish that up front that there is a place for the prophetic. And the Bible says to not despise it. That means that if you find yourself in an environment where yourself or the leaders around you continue to despise prophesying, you don't have to fight anybody, you don't have to create trouble, but let it be a settled conviction within you that in the journey of a believer, there is a place, listen carefully, there is a place for the prophetic. There is a place for prophesying. Are we together? When it comes to the prophetic, the Bible lets us know that even scripture is prophecy. Do you agree with me? Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19, please. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. It says, we have also 
a more sure word of prophecy when you read in context coming down you will know that he was speaking about scripture as a more sure word of prophecy it says where unto ye do well that ye take heed now listen very carefully so he's telling you that there are prophesyings that have to do with the speakings of men under the influence of the holy spirit are we together he's telling you that there is another kind of prophesying that is the revelation as captured in scripture it says to also take heed as well so do not despise the prophesyings that has to do with the speakings of men and that you do not despise the prophesying that has to do with the authority of scripture the prophecy of scripture we call it are we together now yes The character of these two dimensions of prophetic operations are not the same. Please listen very, very carefully. So the Bible is prophetic. The words that are written in scripture are prophetic. The words that are spoken by a man under the influence of the spirit of God to you, real time, is also prophetic. But in terms of superiority, please listen. They are not all the same, although engineered by the Spirit of God. The Bible lets us know, please look at me, that the prophecy of Scripture and the prophecy that comes from a vessel, they are all together to the edifying of the saints, but they do not hold the same weight in the Spirit. You have to learn this. The word more sure means more reliable more dependable are we together it attempts to show you the excellency of the prophecy of scripture that means that if given an option for both of them the bible gives you its recommendation in terms of reliability and certainty it tells you to depend on the prophecy that comes from scripture are we together there are many reasons for this and that's that's not that's not where i'm going tonight my goal is to show you why prophecies fail and then to connect a few things and we'll pray the bible in many expressions tells us that scripture has been tried seven times the word seven there means complete that the truths of scripture have been vetted again and again and has been found reliable listen the bible is not the only book that contains pieces of the wisdom of God. Listen carefully. Here and there, God has dealt with people. Here and there, different religions have tapped into the wisdom of God through the understanding of his principles. And they have captured details that are consistent with God's operation. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Chances are that you can pick a book that is non-Christian. You can pick any religious book on earth and read it and you will find communications that are consistent with the way God would have spoken and how God would have acted. And the results even in those books show you that the agency that supplied that result was not of the devil. It's not an endorsement to the books. The advantage of the Bible is that as a singular compendium, it contains the wisest perspective in all matters. Are we together now? Listen very carefully now. It contains the wisest perspective. Why? Because they are God's opinion. Among all of the books that have been arrayed for the edification of man, the Bible, as a compendium of 66 books, has been recommended by the Spirit of God that it can guide men to know God. It can guide men to become victorious. When you study theology, you will find out that there are many other books. They are generally called extra-biblical texts. There is what we call the annals of the king. 
There's what we call the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's what we call the books of Jasha. All of these books are extra biblical materials that were written. Are we together now? But then in the wisdom of God and through his predetermined counsel, he has found out that the truths contained in this compendium we call the Bible is sufficient to be the limit of the jurisdiction of your knowing God. You will find many books that contain certain information that may not be captured here. And God is telling you within the context of your civilization, any knowledge about me that is not in this volume is not required for life and godliness in as much as you're working with me is concerned. So the Bible becomes the coordinates, if you allow me to use that word. The Bible becomes the defining jurisdiction for your knowing God. Listen very carefully. I'm showing you the reasons why the word of God is called a more sure word of prophecy. God has vetted the truths here and found out that any believer that settles with scripture as contained in this book, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there is no dimension of God required for your knowledge that the truths here in partnership with the Holy Spirit cannot bring you into. So it's called the more sure word. It has predicted your life already. More than any man can predict. More than any man can prophesy. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? The vessel that speaks to you is limited by many factors. Number one, the accuracy of his or her perception. Number two, the accuracy of his or her interpretation. Number three, the atmosphere that became the influence upon which he spoke. Are we together? Number four, the level of renewal of that vessel as at the time he spoke. All of these are factors all together that can interrupt the purity and the quality of the speakings. It doesn't mean the person is fake. These are the things that water down the efficacy of the prophetic. Are we together? And then the mental development of that prophet or that speaker also matters. Chances are that if naturally speaking, I'm a person that detests excellence. If God is giving me a prophetic word that relates to excellence, my, my prior fortitude for trivializing excellence will make that prophetic word not come with the gravity with which it left heaven. Because in my person, I don't find excellence to be something that is needed. If I'm someone, for instance, who does not believe finance and prosperity is useful, are we together? If a prophetic word comes that God is going to make Sam a millionaire, remember I've trained myself to be embarrassed to even talk of millionaire because I've interpreted it as carnality. Chances are that I would just say you are going to be blessed. You see that now? So the efficacy of that prophetic word was corrupted by the limitation of my spiritual understanding. But then let's assume, for instance, that I was accurate enough to deliver it, to be fair enough, and you now receive it. Now remember, I'm not fake. Remember, I'm anointed. Remember, you too, you are not fake. You see that now? Yes. The giver and the believer have to be real for it to work. So we agree that two of us are not fake. Are we together? And now you receive that word. And then it never comes to pass. And you go back to God and say, Lord, what happened? I got a prophetic word by a man of God. And according to the word, he said by June, I will have a car. Remember, he called my name. It was accurate. He called the name of my wife. It was accurate. Every other detail was accurate. So it supported my believing him. Yet it did not happen. I even fell down. You can add it. And it didn't happen. He prophesied to me that as I return back, my ministry will expand. He described in detail my ministry. Called the name. 
called everything. I went back and after five years were worse than even before I came for that consultation. What is the reason? Why do prophecies fail? This is a question that even men of God, apostles and prophets themselves, have not seemed to find an answer to. So usually, as men, the obvious answer is to transfer blames. So I come to you and I say, it has to be your fault. You didn't have faith. You didn't believe me. My track record is there to show. And then the other person says, well, I may have my track record, but I don't know what happened to you as at the time you are speaking to me. I know that it was not God. And then we read scriptures like God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Are we together now? When you read these scriptures, it further confuses you. Because you are now looking and saying, that means that it is within God's power to bring his word to pass. The reason why many people are confused over spiritual things is because we don't read our Bibles. We listen to people. But we don't study scripture. We do morning devotions. We listen to messages online. Profitable and wonderful. But we don't stay with scripture. For the purpose of building understanding. Building conviction. So most of our convictions are outsourced and borrowed. Our convictions are hardly intrinsic. Something that came as a result of a revelation given by God. Most of our convictions are outsourced. We borrow the confidence of someone we respect. Just because the person said, this is it. We say, this is it too. Why do prophecies fail? Hallelujah. Are we blessed? So many people have relaxed and crossed their legs so many people have even written the prophetic words that were spoken unto them. Barren women have received prophecies. You will have a child. And it's five years gone. No child. Sick people in the hospital receive prophetic words. Do you have a loved one in the hospital? Yes, sir. Is he sick? Yes, sir. About to die? Yes, sir. Thus saith the Lord, he shall not die. Isaiah 38. Mighty God, we give you praise. Give us understanding and be glorified. Isaiah chapter 38. Mm. In those days, look up please, was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah the what? The son of Amos came unto him and said, help me read. Thus saith the Lord. Stop there. So we agreed that it was not the speakings of Isaiah. Thus saith who? The Lord. Set thy house in order. Why? For thou shalt die and not live. Don't call anybody fake again because the prophecy is negative. Who spoke negative here? Thus say it who now? Talk to me. I mean, we're Christians. Don't just begin to... The man was a vessel. I brought you Jumia package. You opened it and saw a gun and you arrest. No, you, you don't. I, I was sent. I'm a messenger. Thus saith the Lord, set your house in order. He says, for thou shalt die. Who are you going to beg? Who will you beg to help you beg God? That God sends a prophet and he speaks. Put your house in order. You are going to die. Verse 2. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto who? <laughs> he turned and prayed unto the Lord verse 3 and said remember now O Lord I beseech thee 
how I have walked before thee in sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. And with a perfect heart, and I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept so. Verse 4. Then, then, hold on. The first time he said, Thus saith the Lord. Now he's saying, The word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Verse 5 Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Listen. What was wrong, O oh God, with your understanding? Couldn't you see the end from the beginning again? You sent a prophet with your reputation on him. And within minutes, prophecies changed. This is a discussion between God and and a man a man goes to God and say God what did I hear that you said you said I'm going to die let me do something to you that will make you change your own word please listen I have added now 15 days to your, to your years verse 6 and I will deliver thee and this city from the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. Next verse. We are reading to verse 8. And this shall be a sign from the Lord. That what you now hear is more superior than what you had before. Because the both for and against me came from God. So why, which one should I believe? Remember. Thus saith the Lord before came from God. Thus saith the Lord now also came from God. You have kept me in limbo. And God is saying, I will give you a sign. To show you which is superior. Please go back. Verse 7. Verse 7. That the Lord will do this thing that he had spoken. Which one? Which one didn't he speak? Verse 8. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which is gone down in the sun, this and that and that, backwards. So the sun returned 10 degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. He gave him a sign. So by the time the guy saw the sun going down, he said, ah, this sign was tied to the second prophecy. And based on it, I know now, and I have confidence that something I have done has made God to override the first prophecy. There is not, let me tell you some interesting things here. Number one, God never admitted he made a mistake. So it was not a mistake. God is, ah, sorry, is it you? Ah, uh, 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 Isaiah, you know how busy I am. I have to speak to this and that. No. God acted as if he didn't talk before. L listen to this. He would have said, okay, go back and say, it's okay, it's okay. No, you don't need to cry. I'm God. Am I still not your father? He just changed as if he's not the one. Imagine if you were that prophet. It's as if God just denied you now and left you in trouble. Imagine if Isaiah came to your church. If um, who? Hezekiah came to your church. Miracle service. And you now prophesied. And said, this is what I see. Oh. The same way it moved from positive to negative. I can also stand in the name of the Lord and prophesy to you that by next week, five of you will be in America. And by next week, one person is in jail. The other person is in the hospital. And you will come back and say, Mr. Man, come and arrest this man because he is fake. Between the first prophecy and the second prophecy, man did something. Listen to me very carefully. Between the first speaking of God and what he changed, man did something. That means between a positive prophecy 
and a negative one that happens there is man in between that does something that can turn prophecy please listen to me and learn this all personal prophecies write it down please all personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God all all personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God have conditions that must be adhered to for their actualization all prophecies there is no prophecy spoken by any man of god on earth that happens on his own are we together listen the prophecy of scripture is a revelation of the preset principles of God that has already been attached to his speakings. Notice, notice how the construction of scripture is. For every speaking of God, there is a condition. Are you seeing that now? The moment you satisfy that condition, there are some of them you don't even have to pray. The moment you satisfy that condition, it happens. Are we together now? Look at this. I don't need to speak to your ground, your farm, and say in the name of Jesus, except I'm not a man of God. Corn, you must come out this year. No. Already a word had been sent while the earth remains. Seed time and harvest. That means if I never sow, I will not know whether that word is still valid or not. So my sowing gives the word an opportunity to prove itself and then it grows. That the word of God is more sure because already for everything God says, the principle to actualize it has been added. As a man of God, I can receive prophecy for you and not be able to be aligned enough to receive the principle that makes that prophecy come to pass. I can tell you God is going to lift you, but the limitation of my prophetic reception does not allow me to tell you what you must do to make that prophecy come to pass. So I just tell you, this is what I see. You are great. The word of God says, this is what you must do. You are great too. Choose which of the two. That if you never meet a physical man who speaks to you, you can go to Jesus the prophet. I am the way, the truth, and life. Jesus the prophet and look at a scripture and lift that scripture as Jesus speaking to you and say Jesus I hear you I've heard you say to me that it shall come to pass if I diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and do all that you command me this day that you will set me on high above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon me and overtake me there is no witch in hell hear me if you prophesy to me and say, Apostle, I see failure. You are not wrong. But I, have, I know that there is a more sure word of prophecy. For as long as I walk in keeping with what Jesus the prophet said, there is no divination and there is no enchantment from the pit of hell that can override the authority. In the cadre of authority, the prophecy of scripture stands superior to any human prophecy. Men of God and women of God are gradually pushing prophecy outside of the jurisdiction of its relevance. And members are today becoming slaves to men and women of God. A man seems to be able to own the souls of people because you can just speak to anybody anyhow. And they go back saying, this one has spoken. Apostle Joshua Selman has spoken. No. Prophecies can fail to the negative 
or to the positive. I can speak to you and say God will bless you. You will eat well. Don't obey the principles of scripture that make for increase and you will be surprised. When men say there is a casting down, you will join them and say there is a casting down. Why? Because you violated the principle. There is no truth of scripture. Salvation is the freest thing we know. And the condition is that if thou shalt believe with thy heart, talk to me koinonia, and thou shalt confess with your mouth, that means you can stand around a preacher and he can preach a powerful sermon and you will still go to hell. You had the word, but you still went to hell. This action part, this condition part, is why many prophecies fail. The prophet spoke in scripture that a virgin shall be with child. He didn't say a virgin called Mary. He said a virgin. There were many women who qualified for that prophecy. But one woman aligned herself enough. So the angel came to say, Madam, we have found you favored. And I've taught you that favor does not happen automatically. Mary was understudied from heaven. There were many other ladies. But heaven looked at Mary. Does she sustain? Please help them. Does she sustain the character? Will Mary be able to stand the embarrassment of getting pregnant from a ghost? The way Mary is, if pressure is too much, are you sure she's not going to corner Joseph and run away? Is this woman, is she liable to receiving a bribe from a rabbi? Mary was not just favored, she was studied. Her alignment was making her partner with prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then the angel came back and said, Mary, we have found you favored. And the favor is that based on our examination, you are the most fit person among the virgins here to carry Jesus. She said, well, um, I don't want to abort prophecy. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. And then the angel explained that, okay, this is what will happen. You will not need to meet a man. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. Your stomach will just start bulging out. Don't find it strange. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't worry. It's okay. And she said, be it unto me. Be the word unto me. I receive the word. Be it unto me according to your word. Mary would have sat down and said, no, this deal is not fair. The ghost has to come with you and explain to me. And let me understand if I see him and I think he's really a spirit and that. Do you know it would have delayed the birth of Jesus. Heaven would have had to now go back and start looking for another person again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. So God has spoken great things over our lives. Many of us received the word. We didn't receive the conditions. We left the conditions on the ground. When we fell down, we got up, we received the word. But we left the conditions. As a result, our lives are a shadow of what God said should be. Because we received the word, but did not receive the conditions. The angel comes and tells Joshua that this city will be defeated. But then he gives him the conditions immediately. And demands that the conditions be adhered to in total. So he began to go around Jericho once every day. The seventh day he went seven times and they shouted. And prophecy came to pass. There is no prophecy that happens on its own. There are few prophecies in the Bible that are called written judgments. There are verdicts already that have been declared. One of it is the eternal doom of Lucifer. There is no prayer retreat that will happen to beg God to change his mind about the condition of Satan. So if you have a dream and you see Satan 
coming back in heaven to join the seraphs, you know straight up that you are under attack. Because based on the truth of scripture written, it's a written judgment. Are we together? Another written judgment, the eternal doom of those who reject Christ, the Antichrist and his cohorts, these things are written. The only thing you can do is to exempt yourself from it, but you cannot stop it. Number three, the reality of causes and yokes on earth is written. Ordinances were intentionally put. The only thing you can, you can't stop causes on the earth. No, they are there. The only thing you can do is exempt yourself from it. You can say minus me and my family, but to say minus it out of the earth, no sir, it is not given to you. You can cast out demons from your life, from a church, from your vicinity, but not from the earth. There is nobody who will stand and gather all the demons on earth because he said, I behold, I give you power. Remember scripture, power. So I have that authority. I've been risen with Christ above all thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. You gather all the demons in one place, catch them, and let there be peace on earth. No, that does not happen. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. The number one reason why prophecies do not come to pass is because people receive the word but do not receive the condition. The condition for actualizing the prophecies. The other side of this is that you can change any prophecy. Write it down, please. Don't let anybody tell you there are prophetic words that will not change and cannot change. That is against the character of scripture. The Bible shows us again and again that it is within the power of a believer to change prophecies. That means if your father looks at you and says you are cursed, you are a foolish and stupid son. I know a woman... Years ago, when I was in secondary school, there was a woman who was tired of her son stealing. She would make her little money, and this naughty boy would come and carry, continue to fish the money out of the, the mother's wallet. And one day she was angry, and she looked at him and cursed him. She said he would stop stealing only when rats stop stealing. Let me tell you, this guy, as soon as he's going out of the cell, he won't reach two weeks, he's back again. They know him, they just open the door, there's nothing to ask. What happened? Mm -mm. Just walk in, we know. Do you think that boy does not have a way out? Imagine that that boy is in a place where he never meets a man who can speak to him. Is there hope for that boy? Yes, sir. There is Jesus the prophet. That he can look at it, that even the lawful captives... Is it in your Bible? A more sure word of prophecy. Even the lawful captives can be delivered. So you can find this truth and believe it. But you just get up and say, wow, I found it. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I'm delivered. Hallelujah. You are not delivered. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You are only informed about deliverance that is possible. Are you seeing how we mock ourselves? We just find it. Oh, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm done. And right after them, you will see what they say should happen, happen. There are conditions. What made the captive lawfully captive? And what is the condition for that person to be delivered? The biggest hit of this prophetic inaccuracy is in the area of financial prosperity. Many poor people in the church today, the years they have spent waiting for prophecy is the same time they would have activated the blessings of God upon their lives. They have sat down lazily and carelessly and some foolishly waiting for a prophetic word by an accurate man. And members continue to harass men of God around and say, you have spoken, it's not working. I bless you. I bless you. You are correct. But you go and read and study everything the Bible says about the blessing. How it works and how it is activated. And you find out that many people are hoping in futility. It's true. Charismatics. This is where charismatics have failed. 
the excitement that comes with revelation has swallowed up the need for compliance people just jump here and there things will happen he shall keep the imperfect peace yes and no evil shall come nigh thy dwelling you go and look for trouble and see what happens it will look as if angels are no longer there so what have you, I, I, I get what i'm saying now yes you can choose to end your life now today right now you go and stand you go and stand on the road let me be prophesying in jesus name you will live long i stand under the oil god has given me while you stroll foolishly you use your will that is more powerful that's the same will that brought jesus into your heart jesus stood at the gate of your heart and would not enter until that will let him in and you stand in front of a door and a truck the spirit of death is an opportunist he looks for a scenario that makes his ministry possible so he's scouting around zaria and here he finds someone about to stand near a t-junction carelessly he will heighten the drunkenness of the driver and with speed he will not see you he will come and clear you you are dead now resurrection is a different law altogether we can now start but as far as that seed is concerned you are dead hallelujah let me tell you something that happened to a young man i'm sure he may be listening or maybe he's here it's a big mistake that the boy made he had some carryovers and um he saw me in a dream <coughs> according to him i appeared in a dream and i told him i said everything is all right now watch this now everything is all right very consistent with what god will say <laughs> are we together the same way God looks at the poor and says, let the poor say, I am rich. They said, I'm rich till they became old. Nothing happened. <laughs> and then the gentleman got up and didn't even do anything. He refused to take the carryovers, refused to do anything. And he just sat there and he called me and was sending text messages and was telling me, look, I'm not trying to jeer the gentleman. No, not at all. I'm just trying to use it to correct now you see that word was at the mercy of a condition are we together now is you know when your lecturer sees your script now you have done your own part to at least write the spirit of god can now move upon that man to show you mercy mercy is not possible now because the condition to activate the mercy was not granted the same way the bible says that you will build houses and you keep looking at your land that house will not be built someone will look at you and say speak to me say I, I, the same thing i told you last year is what god is showing me again the day you take a step of faith and you buy sharp sand one tipper and pour there by faith what happens that's your five loaf and two fish you are ready for a miracle a destiny helper can now come and say what's going on here say I'm, I'm starting life i'm pushing this thing by faith say, really come to my office tomorrow now your obedience has allowed prophecy to find expression are we together yes your marriage shall be a blessing your children surround your table you will see your children's children you are a bad gentleman and you are a bad lady god will never that prophecy will never come to pass are you getting what i'm saying now there are many guys that just cross their legs i saw myself i saw my children i saw a jeep here i saw a resort center here you are dreaming let me tell you this prophecy will never come to pass because god demands diligence and productivity for wealth to happen you have ignored that law and so that prophecy will never come to pass are we together your marriage will be a blessing if you know what it takes for a husband and a wife to live together if the only thing you take to your marriage is prophecy you are in trouble you must take understanding you must take what understanding so that when your wife shouts and say i hate you i hate you i hate the day i married you you just know that she doesn't mean what she's saying if you carry that that straight line prophetic thinking and slap her that's the end of that marriage in spite of the fact that the bible says you will see your children's children 
prophecies can fail when men do not satisfy the conditions that make for the actualization of that prophecy it will fail the same way negative prophecies can be averted i've told you i've shared this with you once and again that people continue you know here and there people can have dreams about me over trips that i'm taking whether by road or by air and they can send the text and say apostle i got up i saw a very dangerous dream very dangerous dream and this is it and i saw a ghastly motor accident or i saw a plane crash and you are there now they are not fake truly it may be that that's the plot of the enemy it would be stupid for me to think satan is going on break for me no there are many people who think the devil is attacking them the devil is not attacking them do you know what it takes for satan to attack you you to be honest if you were satan will you attack everybody it's not strategic what have you done that justifies being attacked the level of investment you think satan is making on you is 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 flattery most of what we are getting is the inertia of prophecy just sitting on your life and not moving because you have refused to do something about it take satan out of the earth people's condition will only improve a little only do what improve a little you will be surprised you will think if satan is taken out of the earth suddenly the poor will be rich suddenly you in fact let me tell you there are many people who that god uses the way the devil pushes them to help them understand god you will be surprised to see that some people's situation will be worse when satan is out because there's no basis for pain again to bring conviction Some of you right now are sitting down waiting for prophecies to happen by themselves. Some of our parents received prophecies since 1980, 1970 till today. That prophecy has not come to pass. And we continue to carry disappointment in our hearts. I am showing you right now, listen very carefully, that more than the speakings of any man, you must find a place there are many men of God who people will look and say, I see a grace on you. Say, yes, I, I, somebody has told me before, confirmation. I see that you will be a powerful man of God. Yes, sir. I'm seeing like Reinhard Bonke. I see Reinhard Bonke. The other one said that you will never be like Reinhard. Do you know what Reinhard Bonke did to be Reinhard Bonke? Talk about the times of prayer. Talk about the times of fasting. Listen to me. Talk about the times of engaging the world. Talk about the disciplines that it takes to host God's power. You ignore that there is no Reinhard Bonke for you. The worst, in fact, let me even take it a step further before we pray. The worst one is that hands were laid on you when prophecies came. And you just believed that because hands were laid and I fell down. I got up with conditions satisfied automatically. No, you were engraced by that falling. The real anointing for the result has not yet been given. That anointing for the result is waiting when your obedience is complete. That's when it comes on you. The anointing you received, I'm telling you, is the grace to walk in keeping with the conditions that bring that prophecy. Are we together? It's a simple message, but it will work wonders in your life. You will call your brother very quickly and say, sir, please come. I already know that this your journey is heading nowhere. Just sit down. Let us discuss. Why is this family like this? He said, don't worry. Prophecy just came last week. And you will know who to drive away from your house respectfully. By the time he comes again, singing all kinds of songs and saying, it does not work. Abi, let's walk again. Bring 200,000. Bring one chicken bring one bag of rice and then success will imaginarily happen no sir whether a man is fake or real the result in your life will be the same if you don't engage it did you hear what i said whether a prophet is fake or a prophet is real once there is no engaging the conditions that make for actualizing that prophecy your result i guarantee you will be the same it's why many people don't go to church. They went to a herbalist and the herbalist prophesied to them. 
And then they got born again and went to a real man of God. He prophesied to them. The result was the same, zero. And they said, I don't, there's no difference. There will not be difference because the defining factor is not God, not the prophets, but you, the recipient of that prophecy. If God tells you you are going to marry a multi-millionaire, what are you supposed to do? Thanksgiving. Yes, Thanksgiving. But what, what do you do else where you finish Thanksgiving? You go back and start saying, God, help me. A millionaire means many people will hate him. A millionaire means that he may not have time to rest. A wise person begins to war with prophecy. You, God tells you now you will be a millionaire. How do you behave? Buy new clothes. No, sir. That's not how to conform to prophecy. You go back and follow them who through faith and patience. Once you don't see faith and patience, don't follow them. Even if you see the promise, you must see faith and patience to qualify followership. Anybody you see the promise and you don't see faith, meaning there must be a God equation in their life. There must be something in their equation that forced them to need God. Are we blessed? There are many things today that God has brought this ministry into that God did not directly prophesy to me. I'm not one of those men of God that will lie to you that everything we're seeing is what God... Mm -hmm. There are things God did not tell me. I went to the word, Jesus the prophet. I looked at the truths of scripture. I understood the truths of scripture. And I saw the conditions attached to it. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I read and studied how Jesus increased in ministry. Jesus increased in ministry because he first increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. That means for anything to increase around you, something must increase within you. That's a revelation. So I don't move around with the brain of 50 members. And the prayer request of 5,000 members. It doesn't work that way. I must upgrade myself spiritually, intellectually, to be able to host the kind of increase that I trust God to bring. We only know that a crowd came to Jesus. But Jesus grew. At age 12, when his mates were running around, Jesus was at the temple learning. Learning. Are we together? There were few times in scripture where we saw Jesus around feasts. There were few times in scripture where we saw Jesus just enjoying himself. That's the portrait of a serious man of God. You, God has called you into ministry. Every movie that comes out, you must see it and watch it. It's all right if you are called into the movie ministry. But if you are called into the word ministry with power and signs and wonders, that's too much luxury. To host the anointing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. Sincerely, I, I tell you the truth as a man of God. I stand from the standpoint of the knowledge that God has given me. And I look at many people and respectfully I can tell you. There are people that results are far from them. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But even when people stand for me to pray for them, I know that what I'm, I'm doing is not the final solution to that problem. And it is painful as a man of God. Not many people will tell you this truth. Because sometimes you see men of God who are victims of manipulating the ignorance of people. The ignorance of people can be used to the advantage of the man of God. There are times that people stand with seeds here sincerely. And I look at them and they say, Apostle, I just emptied my account and my heart is bleeding. What is this for now? He say, Apostle, I know things can turn around in my family. I know the answer is yes and no. Yes, a breakthrough can come. But sustainable financial open doors, no, sir. There are truths you must learn. So I tell the person, okay, go and get koinonia teachings there. And sometimes as I'm talking to them, they start shaking. The moment they fall, they stand up and just laugh. You see some of them calling their loved ones, it's done. No, it's not exactly done. Honestly. 
You see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You must, you must, you must love God and love people to be dishonest. There are very successful people in this ministry, in business, career, and so on and so forth. Every one of them can tell you the different units, the different dimensions that construct themselves together to spell success were adhered to. Where the prophetic was needed, they opened themselves to that dimension. Where prayer was needed, they opened themselves. Where diligence was needed, they opened themselves. Like the ingredients of a, of a meal, everything was combined together to equal success. This is what I'm teaching you. Handing over the responsibility of your destiny to the prophetic alone as the ultimate determinant of your success and not staying with the word of God to understand the conditions will end you in futility and in pain. There were many things that I did not see in my life in spite of the prophetic words I kept receiving. I had to study prophecy and say, look, I have to look at this thing and examine it very carefully. And I began to find out if thou shalt diligently, Deuteronomy 28, please give it to us. Deuteronomy 28, if thou shalt diligently hearken, look up please. This is prophecy, the correct approach to prophecy. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to what? Observe and to faith is not just hearing what God has said. Faith is doing what God says should be done to see that result. When the rich man came to Jesus, he said, good master, what must I do to be saved? Apostle, the devourer is coming every time. I can't hold ten naira like this. It's as if there's a bag. Now, let me tell you this. I can stand as a man of God. Please watch this. We're going to pray shortly. I can stand as a man of God and God can show me a revelation. I can look at, for instance, come Sam. It's looking sharp and smart. Now watch this. You see how sharp and smart Sam is looking. Imagine that God opens my eyes. Now the way prophetic things are interpreted, you have to be spiritual and be grounded in the word to interpret them properly. Because God will open my eyes now. Do you know what I will see? I will see this. I will see Sam holding a basket and I will see water being poured in that basket and going down. That can be a template that God is showing me to mean that there is loss and wastage in his life. Are we together now? So he uses because God speaks in pictures. The Bible calls it similitudes. It is not only words. God speaks in pictures. So when I see that now, watch this. I can say, ah, Sam, all that I see, your finance is going down. You say, yes, it's true. Everything going down. You say, yes. You don't cover that basket just with a prophetic word. No. Remember the going down of the finances is a product of many decisions that he is taking. So the real captivity is the financial decisions. His understanding about God's methodologies as far as increase is concerned that affects and influences the decisions he's taking, that now authorizes this opportunist called the devourer to destroy him. So to really help Sam, after prophesying to him, I'll say, Sam, I need to show you the conditions provided for by scripture to stabilize your finance. Number one, let's look at the spiritual laws you are breaking. Number two, let's look at the understanding. Let's look at what you are doing. You are not producing anything. You are not, you are not diligent. You are not exchanging anything for value. Number two, your reputation is making you to make bad decisions that are above and beyond your financial level. Now, you are closing that door permanently. Remember that knowledge and wisdom are stabilizers of destiny. When Sam goes back now, number one, he will pray and rebuke that spirit. But number two, he has now received a dimension of intelligence that teaches him that patience is godly are we together that teaches him that it is all right to move small in life if all you have is a shoe of 300 naira it is not a mockery on your reputation an understanding you had before called it shame 
What you have now received calls it process. Because of that now, when the devourer comes as usual, a fortification has been built through knowledge. Now the prophecy of Sam, God is changing your life, can now happen. Because favor can now come. A system of preservation has come. This is how Sam is warring with this prophecy. Otherwise, Sam can kneel down and say, yes, sir, I will speak to him. The destiny helper will come and pour the same water into the same basket. So here's what happens in church. And I say this to churches and ministries like ours here that are apostolic and prophetic because many times we have little value for the exegesis of the word. Bringing understanding to the saints, bringing illumination because of the charismatism around the demonstration of the spirit and the prophetic. Many times we, we feel embarrassed even as, ma as men of God to settle down and mature believers through the teaching of the word. We would prefer... To just begin to move. Imagine that I, I, I come here now and the power of God begins to break out. I mean, it's easy for you to see that this is that Joshua Selman. You know, the Bible said this is that. So when you bring a visitor, you say, I told you. It will reach 10 minutes. When he comes up, you'll be flying. I, you doubted me. Now you see it happening. But sometimes when you sit down, you see the way believers are embarrassed and ashamed. When the word of God is taught you, you see that each, I need something. When someone shouts, they start laughing, you know, it just, it's like it just eases up because many people do not want to grow. We have taught that prophecy is a shortcut to destiny. No, prophecy is part of the requirements. Listen very carefully. It's part of the systems that were put by the wisdom of God for the building of the saints. Prophecy was not designed to replace obedience to God's set order. If I give you a book and I say study this book on church growth and success and leadership and administration, chances are you are going to throw that book away. If I say come to me and I will receive just one touch. How many touches? One. One touch, you go back, your cathedral will enter another dimension. That prophecy will work if you have prepared your way like Dotham before you go. Dotham prepared his way before the Lord. If you have prepared your way, you have done your assignment. Oh, with, with Jesus' joy, that oil will come and set your life in order. Before the fire came, there was already a sacrifice prepared already. The fire would not come. The fire cannot come and be hanging in the air and say, oh, you have quickly prepared the sacrifice. You prepare the sacrifice first. There are some of you, the prophecy on your life requires a requisite level of transformation for it to come. And since your rate of change is slow, it will take a long time. So when you say, God help me, God says, I'm, I'm ready to do it today if you will change to that dimension. What do you understand about pastoring thousands of people? What do you understand about the diplomacy of conflict management? What do you understand about leadership and administration? What do you understand about finance? What do you understand about impact and influence? What do you understand about preparing sermons? What do you understand about, about giving people an expression, growth? Just anoint me, oh God, don't worry about anything. Let me tell you what you will. You will produce a place with so many miracles that will depend on you. They will never be able to rise. This is the tragedy of the prophetic and the apostolic ministry. If I speak to you, Sam, and by tomorrow, someone gives Sam a house, a car, do you think next week Sam will come for Koinonia with speed? Sam will not even sit down there. He will sit down on the altar. Are you seeing that now? And then, the day, let's assume that this is a branch church. The day they now want to transfer me to go to the U.S., what do you think God will be telling Sam at that point? Sam will almost die that he had God. No. 
the emotional connect that comes by reason of the breakthrough he received through my life has made my voice look like the voice of God to him. And most often than not, God did not speak and tell him to go anywhere. He just examined the other replacement they brought. And the lazy nature of the man greeted the congregation. I said, no, I won't sit under this grace. Not at this strategic point of my life. And then he would get up and now begin to travel and go and meet me in the U.S. This guy's destiny has been wrongly attached to me. Are you seeing that now? To the point that this man can never know God by himself. Because the definition of Christianity and breakthrough as proposed by me is that if you do not receive a prophetic word from me, you are grounded, you are dead, you are finished. My name is Joshua Selman and I'm telling you it's a lie. If you take the word of God and believe it and walk within the principles that are kept in the word, I repeat to you that no divination and no enchantment. If you are reading the word properly, there are places in the word that will lead you to go and look for men to pray for you. So you don't have to be afraid of being in error. Are we together? I continue to watch with frustration, sincerely speaking. As prophecies continue to be aborted in the lives of people. And they blame men of God and continue to make negative prophecies to come to pass in their lives. I told you respectfully so that in my entire paternal lineage, sincerely, I think aside from my dad, by the grace of God, I am the most successful person. Entire draw the line from anywhere till this. Can you imagine that kind of thing? I saw the spirit of failure and poverty and hardship in my family. You can be the greatest of anything, but live long enough, you must be the least. When I saw it, number one, I didn't deny it. I knew that the, if you deny it, that's another delay you are causing for yourself. The quicker you admitted it, you, the, the better for you. Just sit down and look at it and say, ah, okay, this is it. I see that there is a problem here. But I made up my mind. I, I love the word of God. I found it too. I found it. See, I have set thee above thrones, dominions, above all of this thing every name that is named i started seeing something here jesus the prophet started speaking to my destiny and i had the foolishness to believe him the childlikeness to believe him i believed him so much so that i disbelieved every other thing i saw and then the holy spirit guided me enough to know what are the conditions what does it take to actualize this and then he began to show me step by step. And I said, it may be painful, oh God. I may not be able to go through this myself, but supply the grace. And he says, my strength is perfected in your weakness. Look what he has done today. Apostle is lucky. They pri I remember when they were prophesying that day. Was it not two of us? They prophesied over everybody in the meeting. That's what many people say. That's what many parents say. They look at many great men of God and say, ah, this guy, I, he was just lucky. I knew the meeting he got born again. The same altar call was made for everybody. One person responded, another person wished. Please make up your mind. Extraordinary fruitfulness will remain a dream. Did you hear what I said? There are people who are engaging with understanding and the results are showing extraordinary fruitfulness is not just it will december will come and for many people they will find out that nothing like extraordinary fruitfulness happened but if someone makes up his mind like timothy that i'm going to war a good warfare prophecy has been sent ahead of me lord what do i need to do show me your greatest prayer in this season can be is not just show me your ways lord show me the part i have to play 
show me what do i have to do oh god to change my financial story i've desired fresh oil i have fasted and i have prayed what is the key to the anointing what is the key to a mighty supply of the spirit upon a man i found out the key to keep the holy spirit close to a man because i knew that the nature of the ministry that god had committed to me would require a depth of intimacy and i didn't want theory lord show me what keeps the holy spirit close to a man think of the risk that happens when he becomes far from you and don't let nobody lie to you that he cannot be far from you no huh. spirit of the living god i found him as the secret that he is an ever-present help in time of need but what do i need to do as the recipient thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it let me tell you this i trust god's way one of the secrets of my life is that i trust the way of god most of us have allowed education intellect to corrupt the potency of the ways of god i believe god i believe god i remember when the lord gave instructions here for miracle service foolishly and childishly did it everything he says to do you do when god declares anything here we go after him foolishly i remember jimmy's here he will tell you when the lord said to put some of the koinonia messages online audio audio message that is not very clear people online those of you who are social media experts know that people cannot spend two hours listening to something they don't have that time you break it into sections and someone sits down for two hours 30 minutes listening to volumes and volumes of a message my brothers and my sisters it is not let me tell you 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 will be shocked at the power of god that is released and the energy that prophecy carries when you align with it show me a man who has received a word from a prophet of god or has received a word from scripture and obtain grace from God to understand the requirements and do it. I show you a man who you're speaking against, you're cursing against, you're wishing against. It's a waste of time. My confidence today in life and in ministry is on my determination to keep doing the things that allow to host the presence of God. my confidence today is to keep doing the things that continue to bring increase in my life and in the ministry that way you can stand and beat your chest under god and know you have entered your sabbath satan can come challenges can come but you are as assured of victory as you are assured of christ sitting on his throne My life has no fear. I sincerely mean it because I have found out. I found how to commit God. You commit God in the affairs of your life by obtaining grace to know what to do. Jesus himself knew what to do. Buy the ingredients for jollof rice and bring somebody who does not know how to mix them. You have potential for rice. That's prophecy. But that rice will never, never be prepared there. At best, you are going to have nonsense prepared at rice. But then bring somebody who has taken out time to learn how to prepare rice. And then bring the ingredients. And within a short time, as short as an hour, you will see a delicious pot or plate of rice. God is not withholding financial blessings from you. The word has come. If nobody ever spoke it to you, scripture has already told you. 
God is not withholding increase and influence from you. Something about your not understanding his ways may be responsible. The irresponsibility of allowing prophecy work itself, thinking it is spiritual, is very dangerous. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. But when Jesus walked upon the earth, they tried to distract him. And he said, no, 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 no. My meat is to do the will of him that has sent me. Jesus had an option to abort salvation. When he was at Gethsemane, he cried and prayed. Can you take this cup off me? But he said, nevertheless, my will, not my will, but yours be done. And when he took that cross, it was not an angel carrying it. He was carrying it, feeling the weight. The moment he wanted to throw it, he remembered. He remembered. Man will not be grafted through me to be seated. I, 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 if I throw this now, I cannot call many sons to glory. Let me tell you this and I confess to you. There were times in my life when I would be walking through the night and sometimes I would just stop and a joy of the spirit will come over me. Because I saw the days coming. I knew that there were days of joy and rest. And no pain at that point sustained an ability to interrupt my focus. I knew. I was trying to know the Holy Spirit. Knowing the Holy Spirit is hard. Sometimes you want to sleep and he will just tell you to stroll. You will think you are going to pray for one hour. And you will just return to six in the morning. It's the price. While I am doing that, someone is seen in a vision that a young man is going to arise from the north and he will carry the word and the life and the power of Jesus. That prophecy can remain in the realm of the spirit when you do not partner with prophecy. Is God speaking? What have you not done that is making prophecy to not manifest in your life? What have you done to allow a negative prophecy come to pass in your life? Something was said. You saw it in a dream. That the devil wants to oppress you. You saw it in a dream. That an attack was coming to you and your children. You just got up and, and wrote it down. Usually that's what we do. I had a dream. 3.22 a.m. In that dream. I saw knife. I saw all of that. And you didn't do anything about it. Until six months after that time. Watch this. It will not come as a physical robber. Your prayer life goes down. Your finances goes down. All helpers leave you. What was working stops working. That was the dream. Prophecy seeking expression in your life. Like Hezekiah, there's something you would have done about it. Hey, everybody in this house, turn every plate upside down. I have seen something that is an evil and we can stay the power away. And then you get up and pray. There are many things I see that the devil wants to bring upon people, upon the ministry, upon my life. There are people who send me text messages sometimes, Apostle, this is what I've seen. Pray about the ministry. I don't sit down and cross my legs. While you are sleeping and snoring, I'm awake with God crying and praying. Lord, worship team. Lord, prayer department. Lord, this, there must be increase. People are coming. You are opening up doors. Prophecy. And you say, I saw it too. I saw that by this time, koinonia would have increased. Yes, you saw it, but it was engaged. Is someone getting the teaching this night? Because we are going to pray. You will never see the outstretched arm of God with the assumption that prophecy will work itself out. No. You have a dream and you see people dying in your family. That means there is a word that is bringing death. What do you do about it? You don't wait till somebody dies. Say, ah! And you know, I, I, the other day I told you you are a witness. What kind of witness is that? You can get up and fast. Fasting is powerful, though. Yes, listen to me. Our, our Ajebo generation, fasting is important for a man's destiny. You will never be able to do business with God if you cannot turn your plates upside down. 
there are times you need to sit like Elijah. You write the list of all the nonsense you saw that must change. One by one you are praying. What is this I saw about my wife? What is this I saw about my husband? What is this I saw about my business? I saw an attack. I, I'm sleeping and all of a sudden I have a dream. And in that dream I see chains everywhere. In that dream I see people crying. You don't need an interpretation. The character of scripture shows you that mourning is not associated with glory. So already let the Bible interpret that for you that is trouble. You can call somebody. I pray that you will have a good friend. That when you need to change prophecy he will be available with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That you have a good friend that you say, please, can you stay awake for three hours with me today? I'm sensing the spirit of death over my family. I don't know, but I've been sensing it. And the person says, ah, you know, coincidentally, I had a dream of death. It shouldn't put fear. Your consolation is that the most sure word of prophecy has an ability to superimpose everything planned. And you can get up in the night and agree. And both of you are praying. How do you pray? You engage the truth of scripture. You don't pray and say, God, why now? Where are you? Is it that are you still there? That, that's not prayer. That's just lamentation. You begin to pray when you engage the truth of God's word. I choose life. I'm the head of this home. My children may be too small to choose life, but I stand as a covering. I choose life. When they are in school, I choose life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I've taught you this thing. Listen, if you are married in this place, young or old, you are a man. If you don't go around praying and laying hands on your children, you are not a very good ambassador of this ministry. The children should be sleeping. Don't worry, you are not a father because they serve you plate and you are sitting down. You get up and carry that regalia of priesthood. You are changing negative prophecies. Your child comes back with a result from second position to twelve. The other one from 4 to 18. You don't just flog them. No. Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord. This is prophecy now. That delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty. This is not might. Lord, you have said my seed shall be mighty. While you are speaking that word, there are powers, let me tell you, that reside in the heavenlies. You speak and command your morning. He told Job, Has thou commanded thy morning? You, are, you, are, you sleep and wake up with a dream. Someone injects you with HIV and tells you this is HIV. You get up and say, And you know, I'm feeling the spot. You get up and see marks on your body, physical marks from a dream. And you sit down and just laugh. Laugh? No matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake. As mad as he is, he comes near fire, he will move. I'm not that mad. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind we want to dwell under the shadow of your wing over every challenge in my life blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wing blow blow say Listen, everything you see in your dream is prophecy, seeking manifestation, good or bad. Everything you see in your dream, in your vision is a prophecy, seeking manifestation. You can allow it, you can change it, you can stop it. Inaction is a disaster to a believer. Is what you don't want that you will see happen. 
can you open your mouth in one minute and just blast in the spirit Shabaranda Parukoto Sopreketa Galekata Hallelujah. Listen, listen, please look at me. One of the demands of priesthood, get my message on priesthood, is that men become men of prayer. Not just prayer in terms of petition, but legislators of spiritual reality. Anything you sit and watch will happen. Did you hear what I said? Listen, there was no record of Job praying for himself. There was no record of any man praying for Job. The devil came through him and through his covering to afflict his family. He prayed for his children. It's true that he feared God. It's true that he ensured evil. But that's not the seed for deliverance. You must know how to pray and engage. Listen, let me tell you. Let the devil get used to you not keeping quiet when negative things come. Don't say I'm not a member of prayer band. I'm not a member of this and that. The times that we live in, let me tell you, it requires men with the spirit of Issachar. It's a man who had an understanding of the times. Otherwise, you can confess, I shall not die. And that will sweep you like a chicken. You must have the eyes that see. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I change everything that is not consistent with the counsel of God concerning my life, my family, my finances. Please pray, pray. I change everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Every prophecy that is not of God seeking manifestation through my life, I reject you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I reject you. I speak the word, the most sure word of prophecy. I shall not die, but leave the head, not the tail, above only, not beneath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. I'd like you to find someone to agree with you. Everything God said or you have seen in the spirit that is consistent with God's will and has been hanging by any power of divination within the second heavens. Lift your voice and cry. I command that it must come to pass. I wore a good warfare in the realm of the spirit. I decree and I declare the joy, the peace, the prosperity, the blessing, the anointing upon my ministry, upon my life. I declare.
declare the powers of the heavens holding everything that belongs to me I command the release by the power of the word of God pray few minutes and we are done you are enforcing prophecy Hallelujah. Matthew 18, 18, please. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Yahweh. Whatsoever thou shalt lose, binding and losing thoughts of allowing and disallowing. Are we together now? Please listen to me. Please listen. Listen. That everything that belongs to me and has been held by any power, it must be released now, not tomorrow. Now, lift your voice and begin to pray. Koinonia, pray. Pray prophecy to manifestation. Pray prophecy to manifestation. I command the release in the name of Jesus Christ. He paroto shata lekata rakata barakato sekete Hallelujah 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 Last prayer, and we are done tonight. Psalm ninety one, Psalm ninety one. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, Him I will trust. Continue, please. 
Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. For he shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Five. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that wasted or flyeth by day. Listen very carefully. Look at what the Bible is writing here. Next verse. Six. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Seven. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by thy right side. It shall not come nigh thee. Eight. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Listen. That means every time you hear of negative things, someone is dying. They are kidnapping someone. This is happening. In as much as you sympathize with people, you don't do them at the detriment of your own conviction. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If Joshua Selman dies today, it does not mean that the truth of scripture giving life is a lie. So in as much as you sympathize with people, do it lovingly, but not at the detriment of the immutability of God's counsel. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. Until you rise up to possess your possession, you will never never possess your possession Jesus was in the wilderness praying and fasting for 40 days Satan came to tempt him when he defeated him he returned in the power of the spirit and his fame went abroad let me tell you something my brothers and sisters I hate to be the bearer of bad news but there are controlling powers that continue to see that negative prophecies continue to be enforced in our lives and until the saints understand how to legislate by the spirit we will continue to be victims of the speakings of men last prayer father every prophetic word that came through your word or through your servant upon my life this year i stand in partnership I call it Maranatha. Let that prophecy manifest in my life. Lift your voice and pray. The conditions to make it happen. I obtain grace to understand. I obtain grace to walk in keeping with it. Pray. Every prophetic word about my spiritual life, about my finances, about my marriage about fruitfulness i receive by the spirit i obtain grace i obtain understanding i obtain grace i obtain understanding to know what to do to know how to partner with prophecy Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one testimony and we'll round up tonight. A gentleman sent me a text and he said he was tired of what was happening to him and his family. You know what people call failure at the edge of breakthrough? That you see good things, but just when your hand is about to obtain it, trouble must ferment itself from wherever and come and destroy you. He said he was tired and one night he took out time that if he's to die here he would die and he would pray listen to me true story he was praying he said he had come here with an oil that i prayed for and then you know he went back and applied that oil and he was praying and praying and praying and then it looked like he fell into a trance and according to him he said i walked to him and i told him to lift two of his hands and when he lifted his hands i started removing what looked like maggots out from his hands like that removed or uh, maybe a number of them 
when the gentleman said that happened by the next day he got a job next day he got a job see I've told you time does not change anything you must engage with prophecy you must engage with prophecy don't wait until miracle service when you write your prayer request and bring it here go and write it now and trust God for grace one hour in the night will not stop your sleep we spend three hours worrying wake up in the night every man in koinonia is an intercessor let me tell you if you're a married man in this place and you're not an intercessor you are not a good ambassador learn it wake up and pray put that request on the ground place your hand on it pray it will look like nothing is happening don't mind what you are seeing you just pray forever oh lord thy word is settled let me tell you what will happen when you pray satan will use the sense realm to send images that negate what you are trying to do because he knows that to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace you can even finish that prayer and go back to bed and have a dream that is another negative connotation and you stand up and say but i just wasted my time so these three days prayer and fasting is nothing if it was not bringing an effect with hell the devil will not send you that kind of dream the key is to remain let me tell you this there are certain prayers that you don't pray for one day let me be sincere with you and i don't mean to insult anybody but that understanding that when you pray once is done well i may not have enough experience to challenge that but i can tell you the one i know that when you stay on an issue Huh? and you pray and cry Jesus prayed he came out saw the disciples went back and prayed the same words the same way three times Jesus prayed Bible said looking up to Jesus not up to any prophet or any man of God don't pray once and sit down how long do I pray until you see the feast manifest in the earth realm you pray on when you see the, the cloud manifest in the earth realm it gives you a sign then you know that those realities have reached otherwise please pray if it takes 21 days pray the grace for the the spirit of gluttony that will not allow you to fast and pray i curse it now in the name of jesus it's a different thing if you have a health issue that may not allow you to pray there are many of us the last time you fasted was during um fasting and prayer that's not healthy for your spiritual life please don't say it does not matter everybody know we know where we are coming from by god's grace our children will not go through this but in between where you are coming from and where you are going you must stand as a bridge and flog this thing out once and for all reject spiritual laziness stay with the word please listen to me let me advise you i say this not to everybody at least i have a responsibility over you please obtain grace from god to sit down in one place this spirit of running up and down from here visiting this running and down i cancel that spirit in this season in jesus name you must obtain grace don't sit in your room gisting gossiping talking open your bible and sit down for god's sake and study more than listening to a message carry your bible carry your notebook and sit down read something spirit of the living god open my eyes and sit down and read there were times when any house you go to you see people even if they are just in their bible is in front of them but right now is this these are phones everywhere you sit down you are watching film you are watching this i'm not saying it's wrong but life has seasons for god's sake a farmer who is sleeping during rainy season will be foolish to go to the farm during harvest the earth still works on seed time and harvest you are a man of god here reduce your physical exposure and stay in the secret place and pray i'm 
move around. I'm a pastor. This I'm a prophet. This I'm a apostle. This sit down in one place with the word. Be sound in scripture. Be mighty in power. Most of what you need for your destiny is internal. Sit down. Don't become a busybody roaming here and there. You know, in the afternoon, you are there in the hot sun. You are moving around. You visit this one. I'm not saying visitation is wrong. But you are at a critical point of your destiny. Receive grace to sit down. Study. When you fall asleep and you stand up and you didn't read your Bible, you didn't pray. Don't act like nothing happened. Don't forgive yourself for nothing. No! You stand up. Any time is right for prayer. If you plan to pray in the morning and evening, that's my recommendation for you. I've told you. The morning times and the evening times are powerful times. So said the ministry of Jesus. There are few times Jesus prayed in the afternoon. I'm not saying prayer in the afternoon is wrong. But the activities of life will not give you the kind of focus. Wake up in the morning and pray. Wake up in the night and pray. Some of you as you go back now, don't say it's too late and it's too cold. Receive grace from God. Stretch a little and pray. And don't just pray anyhow. Pray strategically. Pray scriptures. Obtain grace from God. There's no light you switch on your candle. You switch on your phone instead of just watching a movie and then you 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 watch you watch spirits to enter your destiny there is a price for this thing let me tell you god is not a magician there is a real price either you want it or you don't but if you want it you mean business and be aware of distractors are we together there are people who are sincere people but somehow it looks like because of their weakness, they allow the devil. Just when you want to pray, they just come and knock your house. Have the courage to tell people, please, I would appreciate it if you want to come and see me. I truly would appreciate that you just let me know. I may be studying. Or you can come anytime, but please don't be offended if you come and find me studying. Somebody should not buy a DVD and come to your house to watch and say he's all spoiled. Is that a blessing? What if he comes to meet you doing something? Please take your life seriously. This is about destiny. Make up your mind that this prophetic word must come to pass. Especially this issue of finances. Go and get... There are too many messages that have been preached around the area of finances. Get it and sit with it. Don't just say lay hands on me. Thank God for seed. Thank God for the prophetic. But sit down. I'm a young man. What does it take to be established? Lord, will I end up in this one room forever? The answer is yes until you change it. You sit down. What do I need to know? Are we together? Father, we thank you. We bless you for tonight. You have shown to us that without engaging prophecy it will fail and you have shown to us that negative prophecies can be changed lord bring us together as a family of faith and as a body of believers to a point where we exalt the truths of your word we exalt the immutability of your counsel more than any opinion we choose the word of God as a sure word, a more sure word of prophecy. We choose the word of God as final authority in all matters over our lives. We stake our lives at your word. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for your precious people. Every condition that needs to be engaged to actualize every prophetic word that is upon their lives. I pray that both the grace and the understanding be revealed to them. In the name of Jesus. That you will act out in faith. And that in the name of Jesus, the Lord will honor you. And the Lord will cause your life to be an unending testimony of wonders. Do this, O oh God, and be glorified. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let me make an altar call last week. Because of time, I couldn't make an altar call. A gentleman sent me a text and said, Apostle, I was waiting for an altar call. I really wanted to give my life to Jesus. It broke me so bad. I asked the Lord for forgiveness. 
And so no matter what it is, we'll have to make an altar call. Please keep standing. We're already rounding up. Please keep standing. Let's honor those who will be coming. There are people inside. There are people outside. Who are... You see, you have to see what is more than your pain for your pain to not mean anything until you can see the bible says who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross if there is nothing set before you you can't endure endurance is not generic it is based on a revelation of something higher they say they look forward to a city whose builder and maker that revelation made everything here to not make sense again until you see a dimension higher than what food can do for you until you see a dimension higher than the pain of your sacrifice you will not have the stamina to stand let me tell you sacrifice is a covenant psalm 50 and verse 5 just before we sit down psalm 50 please give it to us quickly and verse 5 it says gather my saints together unto me those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice you don't have to say lord i enter a covenant your sacrifice has a voice lord let it rise as a memorial that whoever mocks your grace upon my life let this sacrifice speak are we together now these are some of the things that will make god to rebuke kings for your sake that there is a sacrifice there is an altar that rises as a memorial. He is a man approved. She is a woman approved. Are we together? Who for the joy that was set before him? There will always come a point in your life where you will need to build capacity. Capacity. He says, if you turn aside in the day of battle, there is only one explanation. Your strength many believers are wonderful people but our spiritual stamina is small anything just blows you and you are out of the way god you didn't do this and that's it but it says be steadfast immovable there is a level of balance stamina that was one of the blessings of the men of david among the men of david one of the blessings was that one could dig his feet on the ground in other words no matter what you do i will not move i can defeat you from one spot are we together now please sit down for a while good evening everybody ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9 we'll still get back to our discussion these are nights of encounters Ephesians chapter 3, let's start from verse 7. Paul is speaking, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than the least of the saints was this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ nine and to make how many men there is a grace given that when you come under the influence of that grace you must see i hope you understand the story he's saying a grace was given to me and that by the privilege of god's power the effectual working he gave me a grace that when people come under the influence of that grace he can make all men see there is a grace that can take away blindness regardless of your level of education listen carefully regardless of your level of exposure you see there are things in life that you have to be educated to understand there are things in life you have to be wealthy to understand there are things in life you have to be poor to understand there are things in life you have to be ignorant to understand But there is a grace that can make all men see. Regardless of your level, regardless of your background, whether you can speak English or not is not the issue. 
the grace has capacity to quicken your understanding. He says, and he shall make him of weak understanding. If the matters of the spirit were left to educated people, then those who didn't have the privilege of formal education will be out of God's program. If it were left only to the rich, then the poor will not have a chance. Are we together? If he was left only to the exposed and enlightened, then those that did not have that kind of privilege will not have anything. But thank God for his grace that when he pours his spirit is upon all flesh and that this grace can make all men see what is the fellowship. It's the word koinonia. Partnership, the sharing, drinking from the same vessel of the mystery. So you can partake of a mystery, not just an anointing. You can partake of the grace that has made a man to see. And you will see the same thing. The Lord began to deal with us yesterday on hosting his power. We're still going to explore along power and impartation. God began to adjust our understanding to see and understand the dynamics of true spiritual power. Isaiah chapter 35. My assignment tonight is first and foremost to help us by the Spirit understand the value of spiritual empowerment. Because until you recognize the value for a king, the, the energy to pursue is not there. Isaiah chapter 35, we'll read the first six verses. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Verse 3. He says, strengthen ye the weak hands. He says, and confirm the feeble knees. Verse 4. Say to them who are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. As a result, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. The Bible paints a picture of what can happen to a person and an environment when the power of God is introduced. Many believers have not been trained to see the value of spiritual empowerment. For many believers, spiritual empowerment is, is, is an elective that you choose if you are interested in doing ministry. So if you do not have any passion for ministries or necessary, say nuisance, all I need is just the word. But the word did not make any meaning. Until the word was empowered. You are not a blessing. Until you are empowered spiritually. You read from Genesis to Revelation. There was no one who had capacity. To do God good. Without God anointing him. God will make a man. Build that man. Teach that man the systems of the kingdom. And then when all is said and done, among the many things, he will grant access to his anointing. I hope you know that God's power, God's anointing, is not the same anointing that God works with, is what he gives you. So that your possibilities can match. Because man does not have in himself the capacity to produce God's dimension of results. If it is the Lord's doing, then it is marvelous. If it's not marvelous, it was your doing. You don't clap for me for walking. It's human to walk. There's nothing supernatural as it were about walking. But when you begin to manifest a dimension not given to men, 
it proves that there was an energy that was outsourced. No one was allowed to serve in the temple without empowerment. No matter how silly the responsibility was, you needed empowerment. No matter how skilled you were, every time God would call a man, out of whatever it is that he does, they must be empowered. Including Mary, the mother of Jesus. Her carrying Jesus for nine months did not empower her. She had to join the 120 to wait until the spirit. Was it not the same spirit that put Jesus in her womb? But that did not empower her. The Bible is full of stories of people who were absolutely weak. Their humanity was so glaring, but not for too long. At a point in their life and in their experience, they had a strange encounter with the spirit of the living God. Then they were anointed and things turned around in their lives. There is no man of God who can produce God's dimension of results and be a blessing. Just being a wonderful, humane human being. There has to be a translation by the power of God. Are we together? It is very, very important. Zechariah chapter 4, please. And verse 6. The prophet is speaking here. Zechariah 4 and verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of God unto Joshua Selman, saying, Not by might, human strength nor by human power but it is by my spirit excelling in your business not by might nor by power but by my spirit doing the kind of ministry that will bring glory to jesus not by might nor by power getting a job not by mouth nor by power being favored not by might nor by power are you getting what I'm saying? Breaking a chain that was there before you were born. There were people stronger than you. That chain kept them there. It is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. You must learn early to give up on the strength of the flesh. It will embarrass you and continue to recycle pain to your life. For by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. When a spirit is oppressing you, there is no machine that will diagnose it. Machines don't diagnose spirits. They diagnose the effect of their presence. But there is a word that is a discerner. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. In Isaiah chapter 61, the messianic prophecy, we know this theologically to be, it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because, in other words, this is the object, the motif, the motivation behind that. He hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. Then he says he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. The opening of the prison to them that are bound. Every time I read this scripture, when I get to that prison part, it touches me. Who are these men in prison? Because they still walk around. Yet the Bible says they are not only tied, they are in prison. To open the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Then to comfort all them that mourn. Three. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. Look at this. You can give a man beauty. You can say, bring your ashes. I will change it for you. Like you tell somebody, bring dollars. I will give you naira. You actually can be anointed to see a man's life. You are not praying now and say God change his life. It is within my power. There is an agency that can turn your life around. That men can receive something from heaven that stops them from being human. 
you can look at a man with ashes my brothers and my sisters and within your power according to the measure of grace you look at that man and say bring these ashes i want to give you beauty like an award like an exchange and you say go you've had beauty he will doubt it until his result shows he steps out of that place and all of a sudden the scenario of his change and all this begin to change and all that he sees is the glory of god to give them beauty for ashes the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness look how men can become blessings to men that something can come upon your life when you see men mourning you don't counsel you don't sympathize you tell them i see you wearing a garment it's only expressed in your tears let me take that garment away and you can give them a garment of praise that they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified god wants to be glorified through the empowerment of the saints please listen to me it takes spiritual power to reign it takes more than good intention it takes more than good preaching it takes more than a sincere heart the days that we live in are evil days jesus himself Reveal to us that there is something called the hour of darkness. The hour of darkness. Psalm 63. The value. Showing you and then we'll tie up a few things and pray tonight. You must desire sincerely the power of God. Oh God. You are my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul tested for thee. In my flesh longed for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Why am I seeking you? To see thy power and thy glory in my life. As I have seen in the sanctuary. Lord, I'm seeking you. There, is, there are things around my life that I know only your power can answer. I've tried to use human wisdom. I've tried to use certain things, but I know that I need to outsource an ability that is higher than me. Ah, happy is the man who is trusted with God's power. You will watch life come under obedience to Christ. But when you are not empowered, you can watch your family members go through the things that happen. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. You see, everything that happens in our lives can be likened to movie actors. Behind every movie, I don't, I don't do movie, but at least I know a little about it. That when you are acting a movie or drama, there's someone called a director, correct? You may never have the privilege of seeing him. He is at the back scheming things. What you watch is the action, but there is a director. You slap this one twice. No, no, according to my script, you should slap him three times. That means that behind the various scenarios of our lives, there are systems and spirits orchestrating it. The disfavor, the closed door, the unnecessary hardship, the lack of church growth regardless of grace, we focus many times on the events. The events are like probabilities. They are infinite. Behind every one of them are these spirits. And the Bible says, how all inspiring are your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Hallelujah. I once counseled an elderly man, very old man, and while I sat down listening to him, he barely spoke and he started crying. And I said, sir, just talk to me, what is the issue? And then he told me that all through his life, he has not known what people call victory. 
that this thing they call victory is strange to him. It's like a man being pregnant. He says, I, I, I don't know anything about victory. I said, why? He said he was never taught some of these things. And he was angry because his life refused to change. This kingdom is a kingdom where in many cases it is the power of God that speaks. And until the power of God speaks like the roaring of a lion, some challenges will not let you go. Please listen very carefully. I shared with you in this place, Koinonia, about a woman who was pregnant one time. And then this woman would go to bed and literally see monkeys all around her, Pastor. Monkeys. And she gave birth to a child and the child came out hairy physically like a monkey, dead. How many people have been prayed for here with HIV? Ask them how they got it. They said they came to me in a dream with an injection. Said this is HIV. Injected you in the realm of the spirit and it appeared physically. That means you can change something in the realm of the spirit and then wait for it like a movie too to happen physically. If it started in the realm of the spirit, it must be adjusted there. It doesn't make sense to come from the realm of the spirit and then you adjust it physically. Some things will never change with counseling. Hear me. Some things will never change with time. Some things will never change with advice. You will need a head-on collision with the power of God. There are families where nobody has risen to any level. The last person who tried to rise there because of the little revelation here and there that he got, when he was almost crossing, it drew him back. Power. The power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus knew the necessity of this. He said, tarry in Jerusalem. Don't make a mistake of leaving Jerusalem to start anything without empowerment. I've given you the lecture, but all that lecture will be nonsense if there is no power. I just gave you theory, but what you are going to be seeing there, oh dear, had they not listened to Jesus, you would meet a man called Bar Jesus. You would meet a young girl who was a sorcerer, and she will show you word of knowledge that you are not seen. Listen, let me tell you, the world that is out there is not exactly ignorant. It's just that the knowledge is demonic and diabolic. You know, many times when we teach like this, even me, I get uncomfortable sometimes because everything I say looks like a lie except that it is true. Hmm. It is true. It is true. Bishop Oyedepo gave a story that one time the church would not grow for a long time, regardless of the prayers that were offered. And then they were fasting just like this. Lord, why is the church not growing? And according to him, he said, the spirit of the Lord asked him to go out. And then he checked and saw that there was a blindfold over that ministry. And he cast it in the name of Jesus and it rolled like a curtain. From that time, increase began to come. There are people, every good thing you do is misunderstood. It's not normal. Her man was begging. The king called it rape. There are spirits that make good things evil. You come for somebody's program to help him. They say, uh-huh, they have come. You don't come and they say, ah, something is wrong. Is a spirit. Let me tell you, when the devil wants to trap you down, only God can deliver you. Because anything you do will lead to the same result. They box Jesus with a question that both yes and no will put him in trouble. It was not the issue of answering correctly or not. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the power of God. Listen, let me tell you. There are many things you have discussed. It's time to bring them face to face with God's power. You need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8.
But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power for exploits in the kingdom and that by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. This is what happened to Jesus. He was filled with the Holy Ghost but not with power. And when he was done fasting, the Bible says, and he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. This conference would not have done us justice if it leaves us with just information without power. It takes power to change your situation. It takes power to birth the purposes of God in your life. Just because God said it does not mean it will happen. There is an energy, there is an agency behind. He says his divine power has given us. His word authorizes his power to move. The power will not move until the word authorizes it. But when the word authorizes it and the power is not there, it will still be of non effect. The dynamics of manifestation is this. Listen, it is not just the union of the word and the power alone. It is that the word is what gives authority. And then the power is what manifests physically to create the change. God's energy, God's ability. Turning people's lives around. Changing people's situations. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, the Bible says how God anointed, don't get too used to these scriptures, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about as a result of the power doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. This is a generation that needs the power of God. There are so many things that continue to challenge believers. We need a manifestation of the power of God. In one day, the issue of loyalty to God was settled when power came. Elijah said, let's stop arguing. Go up the mountain. Let's go to Mount Carmel. That the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And then he gave the prophets of Baal room to begin to do everything that they were doing the bible says from morning up until night do you know the highest dimension of their prayer was sacrifice when everything failed they started cutting themselves he said pray louder maybe he's sleeping and Baal could not answer them and then when it was the time of the evening sacrifice there was a time when the angel of the lord will come to the earth angels are not on the earth just all the time they will respond to prayers but there are activities on earth that make for the manifestation of the angelic do you know how haman got the date to destroy israel i hope you know there was a date haman did not just say to destroy god's people carelessly through divination a spiritual permutation was done and the exact date was there. That means every day is not conducive for everything. This is where spiritual intelligence comes in. Her man, through divination, found out the exact day. The same way there are divine appointments... There are also appointments of darkness. I heard a man of God share a very touching story. And when I heard that story, it really, really blessed me. He said there was a lady who was about to travel. She missed her flight. She felt so bad and cried that he, she missed her flight. Only for her to find out about maybe a, a few hours ago that the plane crashed. The family members were perplexed when they published the names of the people the name of the daughter was not there and they said so what happened she missed the flight and so she went to a train the train still crashed 
those kinds of people are appointed to die so it doesn't matter whether it's through plane or through this the devil will haunt you until what happens happens just when you think you are done with one breakthrough here yeah, is something else but then it says to appoint unto them that mourn the same way that you can put a date to a man's breakthrough and call it today you can call something that should happen next week and give it a date today by the anointing samaria was never supposed to be delivered the prophet gave the date for the deliverance it was he, listen elisha was not revealing something that would happen anyway and maybe he was just privy to an advanced information no he said by this time tomorrow by this time tomorrow if he didn't say it, the tomorrow will come and the cry will continue and they will eat the child the other child that they were arguing about do you know how many people's lives you will save when you are anointed do you know how many people you will save from going down the grave do you know how many people you will lift for going down the grave there are many people today in the grave who had no business going there if you're a minister here please listen to me we are in the days of his power if you lack genuine spiritual power please leave ministry just quietly leave ministry you can find another ministry and help them but i'm telling you the days that we live in will require genuine spiritual power the distinguishing factor will be the power of god because people will come with burdens that no level of intelligence can solve paul said and i when i came to you he said remember paul was not a dull man so he was not trying to trivialize knowledge he says but when i came to you i did not come with the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power that your faith may not rest upon the wisdom of man but upon the power of god that you carry the power of the holy spirit like a drug and enter your house with it you don't need to pray just enter and all of a sudden the foundations of your family begins to shake what is going on in this family there is a shaking what dreams are we suddenly having is because someone who represents the ark entered that house one week after your coming suddenly three promotions without your prayer one week after your coming a strange infirmity that each people in your family gives way this is proof that god is with you let me tell you this the world is truly tired of our stories are we together now and the impatience continues to grow we need a generation of men and women not just preachers men and women who understand the power of the holy spirit many of you are seated here right now buffeted by all kinds of challenges and for many people they think that the answer to those things maybe is just some nice discussion with an intelligent man of god now there are times that you need the power of God. Some of you join the queue sometimes to see me. And while you are talking, I just say, it's okay. Don't worry. You are tired. Let me explain. I said, it's okay. I know what the problem is. No matter what other examples you will give, is the same spirit. Like you tell a doctor, the other day I fell down. Let me tell you the scenario that, he said, no, it's epilepsy. He said, no, let me tell you, he said, I found a problem. He said, Even if you say you fell from a bridge, it's still epilepsy. It's working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. Working in me, it God's ability. God's ability. 
hallelujah this is why we are gathered tonight this is why we continue to press listen joshua selman cannot be in every home joshua selman cannot be in every office joshua selman cannot be in every school joshua selman cannot be everywhere there is a problem if he's everywhere You are supposed to be an extension of the possibilities of the kingdom within the region that you are in. That means that when someone from the regions you have come from is contemplating and say, ah, I should come for koinonia, but maybe I'm challenged financially and the rest. You say, I bring you good news. That which is there is here. Here by the spirit. He said, this is that. That, that, that the prophet spoke about, this is it again. This is that. What is the problem? I've been trying to see apostle. Why? Because things are not working in my family. And then one word, one word from you will open the gates. This is what God is making. And it has nothing to do with being a man of God or a woman of God. By the time you carry the grace for favor and someone just comes and shakes you. Good morning, sir. And he thought he just shook a man and then he leaves and for that day he records breakthroughs in his life he will look for you and say please shake me again i don't know what you did i don't know what happened but you are like the ark of god in the house of obed edom it was dropped there just to let it be under the care of obed edom and in three months 90 days the life of a man changed because something was introduced Jonah carried a spirit into a boat and people were about to die. Jonah didn't pray. Jonah didn't preach. Jonah didn't talk. He was even sleeping. You don't have to be awake for grace to walk. Jonah was sleeping. Yet the anointing was working. That you can turn a man's life around by the spirit bringing glory to the name of the lord as an evidence a testament of the power of god but ye shall receive power Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 after that the holy ghost is come upon you you shall receive power not stories power I'm a businessman. Yes, sir. Power. I'm a politician. Yes, sir. You need more power as a politician than a preacher. A preacher has prayer ban. A politician does not have it. They can cover for you before you go for a retreat. But you are a politician. They hit you once you are gone. Listen very carefully. Let me tell you we are living in evil days. It is true. And you must sustain the stamina. The spiritual stamina. The empowerment. How about wealth and increase? Remember the teaching that I did. That you want to prosper. And even your soul to prosper. The devil says no way. You choose one. You can't have both. Either your soul prospers or your pocket prospers. And you say, no, in God's economy, we prosper as our souls prosper. You don't sell your soul to prosper. The world's way is that you sell your soul to prosper. That was the exchange that was happening at the mountain. Give me your soul. What shall it profit? When it talks of profit, the commodity of exchange is a man's soul and the world. Like pure water and hundred naira. What shall it profit you? If you use this to buy this. The world soul. Trade by butter. Give me your soul. I will give you access to the cosmos. Is God speaking to someone? Let me tell you something. It takes the force of God's power. For things to change. 
the force of God's power. And yesterday we spoke about one of the keys. Let me just talk very briefly. One area and then we will pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We spoke about one area, death. If you remember very carefully, that the price is death. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. Thank you, my dear. Proverbs 23 and verse 26. My son, first instruction, give me your heart. We dealt with that yesterday. So we are switching to the next one. And let thine eyes observe my ways. He's teaching a man a secret here. Your eyes, your heart. Your eyes, your heart. Let your eyes observe my ways. Listen to me. It's an anthem in this ministry. That there is a relationship between your spiritual understanding and the manifestation of spiritual power. You know, most times people say there is power in the word of God. And it's not a lie. But the dynamic, most people do not understand. They think that the word of God is just like a charm or a genie. And the moment you have it or recite it, it has power. No! No! In the parable of the sower, Satan came and carried the word. And he was not shaking. He didn't die. He carried the word. Only God knows where he went with it. When Jesus finished fasting, the word finished fasting, Satan appeared and was talking to the word with power on him. He didn't shake under the anointing. He even held Jesus and took him to a mountain. He held the word with power on it. That the word of God can be made of non-effect. There is a system that releases the power of the word. Are we together now? The word of God is a compendium of his ways, his methodology, his systems. Hidden in the systems, when you understand and engage accordingly, then you release the power that lies therein. This is very, very important. For most people, we just think that the word of God is in the recitation of it like a memory verse. Or in the chanting of it like a charm. You know how traditionalists would chant something in front of a masquerade. No. No. The sons of Sceva were speaking what would be in the similitude of scripture. But the demons did not leave. You have to understand this. And let your eyes observe my ways. That means that every part I walk is a pattern you should pay attention to. Observe my ways, how restoration came. Observe my ways, how speed came. Observe my ways, why Satan could not defeat me. He said, be observant. Before you speak, ponder, sila, think by the wisdom of the spirit. Obtain grace and understanding to discern. You can successfully replace the word observe there with the word discern. Discern my ways. We came from the same background. What did you do that suddenly brought favor? Observe my ways. There was something I did that the natural eyes cannot see. We were born the same day. What has happened to you that you have such an investment of the spirit? Observe my ways. When you give me your heart, observe my ways. My path are the paths of pleasantness. Observe my ways. There is a way that cement writes, the Bible says, unto a man. He says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Jesus said, I am the way, the authorized methodology for results. It is my path. When you follow it, the results are guaranteed. The primary assignment of any man of God, after getting people saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, is to stimulate spiritual enlightenment and understanding by opening them to the ways of God. The methodology, the modus operandi. Please listen very carefully. Things don't just work because they are written in the Bible. Things don't just work because God said they should work. 
behind his speakings are his systems. Listen to me. Beyond words, you have to see the lines that connect. This is where the spirit of revelation, of wisdom, and of understanding comes. You have to pray for understanding. The utopian Enoch had his Bible open. He was just coming from church on a chariot on his way to go back home. And the spirit of the Lord took Philip and says to join that chariot. And then he even saw that he was reading the messianic prophecy. He said, who is this man? He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Was it he more about someone? He says, understandest what thou readest. How can I accept some man teach me? And then he began to explain. To make all men see. There is a grace that as the exegesis of scripture is as the bread is broken, your eyes suddenly see, this is it. This is where my family is. I've seen it. The word of God becomes for you like a compass. It shows you where you are and where you need to be. And when you have eaten and found it, it shall be a joy and a rejoicing to your soul. Behind the results that we seek is not only the word of God, but an understanding of the system allocated for it. Please listen to me. Just because the anointing produced results in an area does not mean it will produce results in an area. The anointing flowed through the channel of your understanding to produce that result. And so the same anointing will be profitless if you are barren of spiritual understanding. Imagine with me for a moment that you have a tap that has potentials to gush out a lot of water and then you have a host. You can use it and you can guarantee that a garden will be watered. What waters the garden is not the host, but without the host, the water will not reach the garden. That host is your understanding. That is the basis of your faith. Faith is the confidence that you get based on God and the integrity of his word and the action you take to validate that confidence. It comes through understanding. Understanding is a real miracle. It's greater than rising up from a wheelchair. And he breathed upon them. He opened their understanding. We need to have a lot of understanding for the results that we seek to command. And I have these mysteries upon mysteries in this kingdom. One of the strange mystery, the mystery of praise, the secret to exemption. Aye. Paul and Silas prayed. They prayed, they prayed, they prayed, they prayed. There is a kind that goeth by praise. There is a kind that goeth by fasting. There are many kinds. There are dynamics of their operation. And the Bible says Paul and Silas, after praying, they praise. And it says all doors open. Not some. All doors open. Praise can open doors. That a man can, he says, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. We've had testimonies in this house where people will lock themselves and write challenges that only God can solve. And sing praises and dance like fools in the presence of that request. And by morning, God will say, you can't do this for me. Was it not a girl's dance that removed a prophet's head? What Jezebel could not do, Herodias, the daughter, did it in a dance. Dance during a man's birthday. He said, what will you want? Even to half of my kingdom. Consulted with that evil and wicked mother who said, remove the head of that prophet. And his head went for it. Do you know the mysteries allocated for the results that you seek? In a dance, not in a complaint. Praise in a dance. Ah, madam, you're going to lose this pregnancy. From what we are seeing, there is problem. Praise 
in a dance. Your certificate, everywhere you have taken for a job, they say, sorry, sir, it's too late. Sorry, you are too old. Sorry, you are too young. Sorry, it's women we are looking for. You are a man. Sorry, it's men we are looking for. You are a woman. Sorry, we are looking for Yoruba people. What tribe? I'm Hausa. Sorry, it's Northerners we are looking for. You carry that thing and bring it before God. And say, where is the God of Israel? Where is my job, oh God? Let my dance bring it. You can dance like someone in a bar. There's no miracle for that one. But you can dance the dance with understanding. Lord, I'm dancing before the God who can change my life. I'm dancing before the one who has all power. How about the mystery of prayer? God's authorized system of legislature over a territory. You don't legislate by discussion. No. When you want to enforce the value system, of God over a spiritual climate. The mechanism allocated for that is prayer. You fortify a spiritual border through the ministry of prayer. He spake a parable. Are you learning something now? That men ought always to pray and not to faint. The mystery that gives you direction over affliction is prayer. It's in prayer that you understand what is going on. You don't pray after you have understood what is happening. Whatever you understand can be aberrated by your pain. It is prayer that purifies the revelation. Is any man afflicted? Not let him understand. Let him pray. Lord, I don't know what is happening, but let prayer filter this thing. And you lock yourself and while you are praying, suddenly the maze, the purity of the revelation comes to you. When it was time for Esther to deliver the people, she said, set yourself, Israel, fast. I will also fast with you as I go to the king. It was a matter of life and death. There are mysteries in this kingdom. One of it is the mystery of your seed. Ah, the mystery of your seed. Now, I know that it may have been abused here and there, but very few believers understand the power of, of seed faith. It's not just some Pentecostal gibberish to collect money out of people. Whoever manipulates people, he has God there to judge him. But let me tell you, there are times you are tired of a dimension and you can connect a seed to your faith huh? and smash every Goliath down to pieces with your faith. Seeds have worked wonders in my life. Seeds have worked wonders in this ministry. There was a year I've shared with you where God gave an instruction to sow everything to empty every money in this ministry. Everything. That's suicidal for a man of God to do. Very suicidal. If your ministry is just a prayer group, you can afford that risk. Because whatever it is, the people will understand. And with careless, reckless abandonment, we did that. And in one week, it didn't pass seven days, God did a wonder that till forever will not recover from. Let me tell you, no matter what you do, a time will come when you have to keep quiet and let your speed continue speaking. It's a mystery in the spirit. The prophetic is a mystery. That you engage under certain circumstances. Every time the Bible talks of restoration. It does not talk of anything other than the prophetic. Read your Bible. Every time there was a loss in the Bible. It was the ministry of the prophetic that brought it back. Whether it was the axe head. Whether it was the bones in the valley of Ezekiel. No matter what it was. The moment the prophetic came. Then there would be restoration. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Is God speaking to you tonight? So every challenge that we have, that we stand with tonight, is at the mercy of the power of God, but released through the host of your understanding. Listen to me. 
It's not just about power, power fall on me. Mm -mm. When power falls on you, it's the same thing like splashing water everywhere. It must be coordinated through understanding to be channeled to the area where the results are needed. Just wanting power at random without understanding is the same way you fetch water and just throw it everywhere and expect it to coordinate itself into your mouth. There is a cup that fetches that water and it doesn't go to your head, it doesn't go to your legs. You direct it where that water needs to go. When you are bathing, even if it's a shower, you don't stand anywhere and it touches you. You position the water. It is not water but assignment to know where your head is or to know where your face is or to know where the soap is. Is their assignment to release water? Is your assignment to work with your plumber and make sure that water is in a position that can get to every part of your body? So the situation happening with you in that bathroom, the water body is not aware. There was something about the way you turned the whole thing and it's not reaching you. Understanding gives value to power. Most people have power but they don't have understanding. So it cannot be coordinated to produce results. We like power because of the charismatism that comes around it. But the efficiency of the power of God is produced on the platter of understanding. There's water in a well. Please help me with this. Look at this. Every well has water. But you don't stand in front of a well and bend your head down to drink it. You do that, you are going to fall down and die. The water that was supposed to bless you is now the reason for your death. But the water was packaged in a bottle. And the bottle, the person that designed this bottle designed it to enter your mouth. That's why this is not where you drink from. Are we together? He looked at the size of your mouth and made sure that the bottle would be able to enter there. Now the water can benefit you because the channel gave it coordination. Please understand what I'm teaching you. There are many people, what you may need may not be more power. Truly the power is resident within you. But understanding is what will give it, will channel it accordingly to produce the breakthrough that you need. And I have seen this again and again with many believers. They are not knowledgeable on spiritual things. They lack spiritual intelligence and yet they want the power of God. The divine power of God is like electricity. But you channel it to do the things for you that it wants to do. Trying to receive fresh air from a keyboard is not profitable. Yet it's the same power that powers a keyboard that powers this. So I must understand the dynamics of its conversion. To know if I want fresh air, it's a fan I look for. It's still the same divine power. It is the same divine power. But sometimes it is not expressed in prayer. It's expressed in a dance. Sometimes it's not just expressed in a dance. It's expressed in agreement. Sometimes it's not just expressed in agreement. It's expressed as you quote scripture and speak to the air. Sometimes it is expressed through submitting to a prophetic grace. Regardless of the dimensions, it is still his divine power that makes for that result. Listen to this. Tomorrow is our miracle service. And many of you see the things that happen in the miracle service. And sometimes you wonder, why do you have to do this? There are times that I may call on specific people and minister. And then at the same time, minister to everybody over the same case again. You see, it is his divine power. But the system of operation, there are others. Until the worship team raises a song, they will not be blessed. The nature of their challenges will require worship. The power of God will flow through the instrument of worship. There are certain people that God's divine power will flow through creativity. When it has to do with wealth, his divine power does not flow through the channel of prayer. So if all you know is prayer, you will heal the sick but remain poor. His divine power is trapped by your bankruptcy of knowledge. You must give his power channels to flow 
through understanding. The more you have spiritual understanding, the more you are giving his divine power channels to flow to the various faculties of your life. It matters that we have understanding. I am powerful. I don't doubt you. But show me the understanding and I see how far the power can go. My understanding is limited to the healing ministry. That is the only area you will see the power of God. You will continue to fast and more power will come. But it will be directed towards that area. The day you learn the economic principle of the kingdom, you will see the power released there. It was always there, but your bankruptcy of understanding trapped it. Please get what I'm teaching you. It will not do us much to just pray and pray and do impartation. And then the area where you are trusting God for, maybe it's area of speed and promotion. But the only spiritual understanding you have is for restoration. The more you pray, the more you see things being restored. But promotion, you will not get it. And you wonder, God, can't you promote? He says, my power wants to move to the area of your promotion. But the host call understanding that would direct it is barren, unfruitful. Where that light came from was the hiding place of his power. I learned this in life and it changed my life. There were things I didn't know and I didn't see the power of God in those areas. And for a long time I would pray and fast and say, God, why? Until the Lord granted me understanding to know that the issue was not more power. The issue was the bankruptcy of spiritual enlightenment. That will give it more capacity. Is God speaking to you? Thank you. Imagine with me an octopus. Right? That sea creature with many channels. That's how God wants your understanding to be. His divine power should not only touch your finances alone. It should not only touch this aspect. Listen to me. Let me tell you the truth. I believe with all my heart that there is enough power and grace to produce what you are looking for. Connect that power through your understanding to the problem you are looking for solution from. If what you want is restoration... Then use the understanding of the prophetic to channel the power of God to that direction. If you keep praying and God has mercy on you, he will bring a prophet to help you. That's his way of having mercy on you. But he will not violate the system allocated for that breakthrough. Are we together? You want to be promoted in a job. The power of God will not only flow through favor, it will flow through competence. Seest thou a man diligent in his business, not prayerful in his business, diligent in his business. He says she shall stand before kings. There is power in diligence. So when you become diligent, a dimension of God's power that never flowed will now start flowing through diligence. If you understand what I'm sharing tonight, you will see the knowledge dimension, the understanding dimension of the power of God. Otherwise, there is no need for knowledge when the anointing comes. What then is the value of spiritual enlightenment if the anointing just generically solves problems? Why should you anoint me with oil? Then I study the Bible again. What am I looking for? I know what I'm looking for. I'm giving that grace channels. Ah! Those who you call wonders, when you see them, they are not like an octopus. They are like an animal with many, many hosts. So almost every area of their life can be touched with understanding and the power of God. You see possibilities. That's what we came to do tonight. First, to receive more grace. But second, to say, Lord, this side has received your anointing. But this side, I'm trying to get this thing there. It's not working. What is the mystery that channels the power of God to this other area? 
Naaman was the king and the captain of the Syrian army. He was a valiant man. His discipline and diligence as a military man allowed certain levels of might to flow. But, but, if he knew that the prophetic would solve his problem, he would not be a leper till that time. It was because there was an information he did not know that kept him there. So God used a small slave girl to say, sir, there is a way out of this. Ah, tell somebody there is a way. Please prophesy to someone. Say there is a way. It may not yet be captured in your curriculum of knowledge. But there is a way. There is a way. Do not use your limitation to conclude that God cannot move in that area. Because he can. Because he can. Because he can. Everything God says. Listen to me. Listen to me. When he releases it, the spirit of revelation will take that prophecy and the power in it and ensure that you have the understanding that connects you to that prophecy. This is how it works. This is how it works. So the more spiritually enlightened I am, it is not the enlightenment that produces result. The enlightenment activates my mind and gives the power of God a channel to flow through. Listen to me. Medical people will tell us many times that when a part of the body is beginning to deteriorate, sometimes it could be that there was a pinched nerve. Is that true? Sometimes it could be that something happened. That is not allowing blood to flow. Because the distribution is that blood should flow all over your body. But for some reason, the heart is still pumping blood. But something may happen to your vein or your artery or something. And just try to create an interference, an inhibition. And for a long time, a part of your body will not receive the supply of oxygen and blood. And as a result, it begins to die. The heart is pumping, but that leg is dying. So it is the doctor's assignment through his knowledge to now create a system. And sometimes the relief is instant. Hmm. This is how it works. We went for a crusade many years ago. Anointed but poor. Yet his divine power was on us. That power was healing the sick. But the police station was waiting for us. Are we together? Couldn't the power stop the police station? It could. Except that the knowledge we needed to allow it get to our finances. It was not there. And then by the mercies of God, he brought that side. Look, when light comes to you, it's a miracle. When light comes to you, now the power of God can flow through you. Let me tell you why certain people's results become very powerful. There are many people who may not have the level of anointing yet, but while they are waiting, they continue to get vast knowledge. It's like you are preparing the host in advance. The day that anointing comes, <sighs> miracles in different areas because they were prepared. I've not met a man of God that can anoint me, but while I wait, what is the key to wealth? While I wait, what is the key to speed? While I wait, so everything is prepared, waiting for the oil to come. Why did he tell the woman, borrow vessels? Borrow many. Borrow a financial vessel. Borrow a speed vessel. Borrow a, a favor vessel. Borrow a restoration vessel. If you return, pour the oil. The oil will come on the speed vessel. The oil will come on this vessel. You see, and when there was no more vessel, the oil not died, not changed, not became powerless. The oil limited by the containers. The prophet saw the woman. He said, your husband didn't know what this oil could do. Even as a prophet and he died. You can be a prophet, but when you don't have vessels, you can die. Please tell me we are going to pray. I came with a word from God to tell you. By the grace of God, this is a place of God's power. But power just resting. You can roll from that door to that door. 
and the power will be there and the only channel you gave that power was your prayer life so you see increased prayer you are praying again like never before and you are saying but god thank you for the grace for prayer but i said that i want something in my family and then you fast again and then more prayer comes and then when god wants to help you he will do to you what he did to martha sit down and listen look at how jesus do you know jesus did not do an impartation service every day but he did a teaching service his entire training was 99 percent teaching and then one day when they had created channels he said now wait the holy ghost hallelujah when the holy ghost came on them they prophesied there was word of knowledge there was salvation there was healing because the channels were ready my son give me your heart and observe my ways observe my ways observe why two people were anointed and yet they could not manifest certain possibilities this kingdom works through knowledge the knowledge is not a charm the dynamics of the operation is that every result is governed by his divine power but his divine power flows through the host of understanding the prophets desire to know some things the power that was on them was enough to help them do certain things but they were denied God stopped them and limited them by hiding certain levels of knowledge so the anointing could not take them far to see some things that's why god says we are a chosen generation in other words people the prophets long to see these things they had the power but the understanding that will allow the power to take them that far was not there man of god my church is not growing yet people come and get healed I'm blessed through my life and they leave me. It is because his divine power is walking through the dimension of understanding you have that allows for healing and allows for deliverance. But there is something about the grace that keeps that you do not know. All that you have given me, I have kept. By what mystery did he keep them? And none is lost except the son of perdition and that that scripture may be fulfilled there is a grace that keeps if you have it you will keep money if you have it you will keep children if you have it you will keep blessings if you do not know the mystery that keeps things you will have them and lose them you can have breakthrough and lose breakthrough you can have good things and leave them apostle every time they pray i get the result but it leaves after two weeks. I know what is wrong. His divine power is still there. But there is an understanding you need to know about how things can be kept. Let me tell you how you keep things in the kingdom. You hand them over to God. When you hand over things to God. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him. You can't keep that which is committed to you by your power. If they give you a bag of gold, you are running to Central Bank tomorrow. Whether the road is, is busy or not, you will smuggle your gold and run regardless of weather. CB and keep it for me. I trust my Megad, but not with respect to this gold. Please understand what I teach you. Our time is gone, but we are going to pray. For many years, I continue to ask, why are anointed people limited? I got one of the revelations that the anointing is in decrease and levels. And the anointing, just like currency, can only purchase the spiritual realities below its value. Every level of grace has a spiritual value akin to money. What one million will do is not what 100,000 will do. If what you have is 100,000, you can only buy things from 100,000 and below. 
If it's a card, you will not even buy 100,000. He must keep something small. So if all the anointing you have is to help people be healed, some can have 10 problems. Come, Sam. Look at this. Please um, sit down. We're going to pray. Let me teach you something. Let me have your attention. Please look. You have to get this thing I'm teaching you now. Look at this. Sam has headache. Just as an, an example. Some has headache. Are we together? Poverty. Number two. Number three. Delay. Are we together? Number four is what? Huh? Demonic oppression. Now, I come as a man of God. Some lists all these problems. When I lay hands on some, watch this now. The level of anointing I have will scan through the problems and only the situations that are below the level of anointing that will be solved. He may fall, but you will find out that when he rises up, only headache will be healed. The rest will not be touched because the level of grace, anointing is not anointing, it's a lie. Go and read your Bible. How God anointed, not just that he anointed, So the level of the anointing can make your challenges relative or otherwise. I used to think anointing is anointing. It just came from the Holy Spirit. Not so, sir. Not so. There are levels, there are dimensions of the anointing. And then when I grow further, I can now come to Sam again. And I say, Sam, what couldn't I solve last year? He says, sir, I listed five cases. Only headache went. I said, well, I've come back with an upgrade. Let's try it again. I lay hands on Sam and suddenly a miracle alert will enter and all this will enter, but that delay will not be solved. So you are a blessing when you are very anointed. So anointed that most of the cases that come to you, there is grace to solve it. Listen, let me tell you this. I can tell you this from experience as a man of God. There are, there are situations I know that the grace that God has put on my life is by far higher than that situation. That's why when I see people come with that thing, I don't even bother wasting time to pray for them. I say, go, it's done. It's within the liberty of my grace to produce that solution. But there are cases that when I see sometimes, I know that I've met a match for my grace. And I need to return back to the secret place. Because when God wants to lift you, he brings people with serious issues. Lord, our church members. Then he brings someone deaf on both ears and who is not even smelling. He stands before you. Can you hear? No, even small, not at all. You pray for him. He falls down. He wakes up richer. But not healed because the grace that you released was for wealth. Are you seeing why balance is powerful? It's true. I used to wonder why Kenneth Hagin will have meetings 21 day stretch. And sick people will come. Sometimes he will not pray for some. He will leave them like that. He will continue studying and growing. One day, he will come back and say, you, come. And that will be it. I now know what he was doing. He was honest with himself. He had a system of gauging. Was it not, was it not Jesus and even the disciples that will discern whether this situation is doable by me? If it was not doable, the one called certain apostles, they were not ashamed. When it has to do with this one, <clears throat> I'm still growing. Please, come. So the disciples pray for an epileptic patient in the name of Jesus. And nothing happened. And Jesus came and said, I know the problem. Two problems. One, the level of anointing it's not there. Almost not there. Number two, your spiritual understanding 
because you saw me heal the sick effortlessly. I casted out the devil out of the gathering. For this kind goeth not. He was introducing them that there is a level where prayer and fasting will introduce a kind of power to you that will help you do certain things. I've shared a revelation with you that every time people fast and pray, it's like a spiritual energy. It's like fire that rises from within them. Do you know what that fire does? I will tell you. When a spirit leaves a man, it goes through desert regions. It's in your Bible, isn't it? And when it goes through desert regions, it becomes uncomfortable because a desert is a hot place. And it compares the desert to the body it left. If the body is colder than the desert, it will prefer to return back to the body. So that when a man begins to engage spiritual energy and that fire burns within you, by yourself, that spirit will leave you. The Bible lets us know that anything in the similitude of fire is uncomfortable for spirits. That's why they like water. That's why water is a major part of their habitation. Because there is restfulness there. He makes me lie down in still waters. We are going to pray. The power of the Holy Ghost is upon you. But this night we must cry for understanding. 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 We will pray for higher dimensions of power. But superior dimensions of sight and understanding. Rise upon your feet. Thank the Lord for the word you just heard tonight. Lift your voice and thank him. Lift your voice and give him praise. We are praying. Is someone lifting their voices? I found my way. To a higher level. Found my way. Greater power. If someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Shala pragadiba ladaba ladaba. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Yeah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Say, Nanaka. Fill this temple We wait on you.
prayer points number one lord quicken my understanding quicken my understanding grant me access to light spiritual illumination a comprehension of your methodologies tired of guessing tired of shadow boxing tired of hoping Are you praying? Shalabarakatos. Was she praying? Look up, please. Hallelujah. Listen. Mention the area where you need a miracle and say, Lord, what is the understanding that connects your power to that area? Lift your voice and pray. Mention the area. Lord, I desire breakthrough. I desire a job. I desire the spirit of revelation. I desire increase in ministry. What is the mystery? What is the key that will allow your power to be channeled in that area? Please pray. show me oh god like naaman a great captain of the syrian army but what is the cure for this leprosy revealed to me by your spirit there is a way there is a way there is a way there is a path which no fowl has seen the whelps of the lion has not gotten there Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. at me believers if you're a pastor here listen to me that is why communion service is not powerful because most people think it's about sobo and wafa so they said eat the bread and swallow the, the drink and then they smile no when you understand the power you will not even be able to hold the communion set understanding they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. There is more to it. You have done it the way you saw it. There is more to it. We are still going to pray. Father, I'm crying to you. Let my eyes draw a line between your word, my eyes, and my situation. Connect something. Show me a key. Connect a mystery. By the Spirit. I need speed in my life. Open down my eyes. 
I need restoration in my life. Open down my eyes. I don't doubt your power. My understanding is limiting your power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. And be very sensitive. Listen. This is why many of you, even after an encounter, nothing happens. Then you go and buy some books and sit with them. And then get up and see results. No new impartation happened. In that book, there was a new host that connected a new channel for the power to flow. For a long time, you've been anointed, but you wonder why good things leave you. And then suddenly, the law of honor comes to you. You learn that honor is a law, and that when you honor graces, it gives you access. From the lens of that understanding, you will start seeing the power that brings favor flow. I don't have to pray for you for fresh grace for favor. Your understanding connected you. The power is at the mercy of which channel of understanding will allow me flow. It's not a different power that brings healing. That is a different power that brings miracles. It's the same divine power. But the system of operation is what makes the difference. Hallelujah. Understanding. These are mysteries about the anointing that are found by the spirit. Questions that I asked for many years. What is the relationship between knowledge and understanding? Because some people choose knowledge. The word, the word. Other people choose anointing, power. And I said, Lord, there, there is confusion here. I need you. And God said, no, there is no confusion, sir. The word gives you understanding. The power flows through your understanding. Representing the might of Jesus in the face of your situations. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Prayer point number two. Some of you have understanding already. But like something can happen from the water board. How many of you have seen that because your house is uphill. Even when they bring water. Have you seen that kind of thing? You open, you turn the knob to the last. And it just comes in droplets. And you want to bath. You are in a hurry. So there is something that can help you buy a pumping machine. And interface it between waterboard and your house. And when you put that machine and switch it on. Suddenly the water can even enjoy your head because of the speed. That's what many of us need to do. A multiplication of the same thing. That I have it all, but Lord, a higher dimension. I have a 1,000 naira worth of anointing, but I have a 1 million naira worth of problem. Upgrade the grace. Upgrade the grace. Lift your voice and pray. There's no doubt, Lord, I'm a prophet, but upgrade the grace. I've received the anointing for well, but upgrade the anointing. A higher measure. Please pray. Believe in what you are praying and pray. Pray. Pela baranda samarakatabakata. Thou anointed my head with oil. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup run it over. My cup run it over. A higher level of grace, a higher level of anointing, a higher investment of spiritual power for signs, for wonders, 
extraordinary results strange results Acts chapter 19. From verse 11. There are a class of miracles called special miracles. A miracle in itself is spectacular. But there are miracles called special miracles. And they are wrought by the hands of men, not angels. God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. Read on. So that from his body, this is what makes it special. Because the rule is that you have to make contact with the sick. And now from his body were brought to the sick. You had our mother's testimony. Handkerchiefs and aprons and diseases departed. When your handkerchief has a voice, it's a special miracle. Because a handkerchief is not a living thing. Special miracle. It is not everyday anointing that produces special miracles. No. In Acts chapter 2, they were filled. In Acts chapter 4, they were filled. Father, I have seen yesterday's glory. I have seen yesterday's results. But before this fast ends, Lord, shift me to a new level of anointing. I have prophesied. I have seen the sick healed. I spoke to people and their lives changed. A higher dimension. Is someone praying? A higher dimension. I've seen the grace for wealth. But a higher dimension. I've seen the revelatory gifts. The revelatory grace. But a higher dimension. I have seen influence and honor. But a higher dimension. Someone pray. Someone pray. Pray, don't be tired. Hallelujah. Let me share with you something. Second Corinthians chapter 12. We're rounding up. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Please give us from verse 8. We're reading three verses. 8 to 10. For this thing. Listen carefully. I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. Let's see how God answered this prayer. This is the prayer of a man who was tired of his situation. Listen to how God is answering a man's prayer. He did his best to handle that situation in his strength. And he could not handle it. 
now he's asking god for assistance and god says my grace is sufficient but you don't know how it works my grace is sufficient but you don't know how it works if it is strength you want then it must be in exchange for weakness if there is no darkness nepa is useless listen to me very very powerful if there are no sick people dr emeka is not needed are we together if you are not thirsty even if there is a bag a drum of pure water here it doesn't matter to you so he says for my strength is made perfect in weakness let me tell you what this happens it's a mystery every time a human being becomes weak something starts happening to the power of god coming to that direction listen carefully weakness is powerful because it attracts the strength of god so when you set your soul to fast as your body begins to become weak the same spirit there is something about your weakness that is calling the power of god when jesus stayed for 40 days the weaker his body the more the holy spirit saw the need to stay it's a deep spiritual mystery jacob wanted a blessing and god looked at him from head to toe there was no weakness he said how do i help you i have to touch something there has to be weakness for my strength to be valuable the treasure cannot be stored in golden vessels the fact that the vessel is earthen makes the power comfortable so that the excellency of power might be of god so when you set your soul to fast god who allowed fasting knows what food does to the body listen carefully if you don't have this revelation you will not understand what you are doing tonight why are you doing a marathon fast that from wednesday you are not eating down till friday do you want to kill yourself what kind of nonsense is this they say you watch what happens there is a level you will get to where you almost want to collapse then watch what happens suddenly like the eagle you will pray and you will be tired have you not noticed that there is a switch every time when you are weak you want to pray you plan to pray for three hours after seven minutes you are tired you don't even know how this will happen but you continue and continue and continue later an agency takes over you and even three hours you can't finish listen listen the power of god hardly starts things he allows you to start and then the power comes and takes you to the flight that's what happens these are very deep spiritual mysteries so this night that you are not eating now your body is already frustrated there is a level of life and health that the body must have for the mind to work it's true when you fast your mind also is subject to fasting because your mind feeds off the health of your body that's why when you die your mind does not work so you set your soul to fast every time the nation of israel were about to be overwhelmed by their enemies they will keep their weapons down and declare a fast plus goats plus everything while they are in sackcloth and ashes the spirit of god comes through a prophet this is what god is saying and victory comes i besought the lord thrice take this away from me and it seems like there is a strength in myself that is limiting the power of god so i set my soul in the similitude of weakness through fasting and suddenly his power comes and picks you up many of you will be surprised what will happen it's not hunger starvation it's a mystery that's why i said a joy must be set before you to receive the grace to endure you're going to cry for grace the grace that will keep you through my brothers and my sisters listen let me tell you this let me tell you this 
If you don't learn this technology, you will break down a ministry. You see, when I left this place, I had a meeting till evening. It was when I was done just a few minutes to the program starting. Had to tidy up some other things before coming here. And I've been standing here. You have to learn to exchange your weakness. It's a technology you must learn. You are more powerful than you are. But until you are weak, you will not know. If a terrorist comes here right now and starts chasing everybody, you can run three days without food and you will not be hungry. That ability was always there. But there was a level of weakness that when your body... How do I explain this now, Holy Spirit? Just believe with me that subjecting you through this spiritual discipline is not a ritual of men. My brothers and my sisters, I hate the traditions of men and vain religion that has no power. We will never practice anything in this ministry that does not have power and spiritual significance. He won't stop till your strength looks like him. He won't stop, no, he won't stop till my life looks like him. God is raising mighty men in this place. God is raising people of power in this place. Yeah. God is raising. Sons and daughters in this place. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till our lives look like him. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till my life looks like him. So when the fast is done. Then you will see that your prayer request of 10 years comes in one day and then you say lord what happened my strength your weakness called for my strength your weakness called for my strength why does the bible call fasting humility because it's proof that you are weak and so you call his strength that they humble their souls in fasting lord if you don't come to help me i cannot help myself he says that's the language i want listen our fast officially ends tomorrow by one. And then we come for the miracle service. Fire will burn in this place tomorrow. <laughs> that everything that has not been planted by our God, he must let us go. God declared that it is extraordinary fruitfulness. That is the grace that you must carry. There will be a strong impartation in this place. And God will shift us. You are in ministry. Come with your heart open and come rejoicing. Because things must change. Hallelujah. Whatever challenge, whatever has refused to bow, come with it. Come with it to Jesus. And let us see the power of his grace at work in our midst. Don't forget tonight's teaching. Understanding allows the power to flow to the area where the breakthrough is needed and that you will need greater dimensions of spiritual power to purchase certain possibilities in the spirit so let this be your prayer all through tonight just because you are weak does not mean you should snore yourself till morning till one find a corner even in your weakness if you have to kneel kneel you are allowed to drink water but please trust God for grace to wake up and pray. If you have a neighbor, you have a friend, tap the person. Say in Jesus name, your destiny is calling you. Wake up. Pray. The virgins slept and there was a call. And they didn't have the time to go and buy extra oil. And because of that, they were in trouble. You have to be alert. You have to pray. And listen for what he will say. 
there are certain things you cannot think about now your body is too weak to allow your mind think it so your spiritual focus is accurate you can trust your hearing the weakness in your body will not allow you to think of the cares of this world you will be surprised you try to think about it and see your mind will give up because the body is weak the life of the flesh is in the blood so you can focus and pray and your mind will be stayed on Jesus and you travel and push through till victory is established father we give you praise tonight we honor you and we love you we thank you for your word thank you for teaching us your ways the way of power the way of the anointing the way of strength the way of grace lord we decree and declare that we are determined for our profiting to be made manifest in this generation we're not ashamed to obey you we're not ashamed to be stretched until scripture is fulfilled in our lives father i pray for your people let there be a supply of grace let our humanity not catch up with us tonight in the name of jesus the strength to push through until tomorrow afternoon we release it upon you in the mighty name of jesus christ amen and amen